TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. If you missed this one, hey, I don't know if I'm going to be live for after this. This is a two-hour, two-hour, this is a two-hour video. Uh, so, you can come join us if you want. If not, just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. You feel it? Um, don't forget, man, any of the old content, if you're looking for it, it's over here on Facebook. Uh, don't forget, we do got the Patreon. This is where we watch things that we can't watch on YouTube, you know, like Top Boy. This is a list. Y'all can look through it. I ain't going to say it. But this, Home Invasion, the story of Channel U documentary brought to us by Link Up TV. Yo. Hey, if y'all stay with me and watch this, y'all different. Y'all are different. I'm going to get into it, though. Let's get it. In an era before social media gave us the creative freedom to express ourselves further, Channel U provided the national platform overlooked by some and appreciated by many. The channel's legacy will continue to be celebrated. 20-year anniversary of Channel U. A link up TV original. I had Sky and we didn't pay the bill. And going through Sky, Channel U was still there. Bro, this is 1990. No, this is like 2003 cable. This looked like uh, Comcast TV on ours end, too. Let's look at you. Yeah, cool. Oh, that was you good? Yeah. Go. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. So, for the kids who don't know, what was Channel U? Ooh. Channel U, bloody hell. What was it before it was 365? It moved around a few times. That's, that should be so simple, but that's actually not. The epicenter of black youth culture in our day when we was coming up. We had a rave scene, a club scene, we had a pirate radio scene, and then out of nowhere, there was a channel. Getting off of radio, Channel U was needed. That was like the starting point for a man in terms of getting on the television. It was like, this is for us. All of a sudden, we saw like people that we knew from our end with music videos on this channel called Channel U. Man would just come home and just have that channel on all day. Channel U is on my TV 24-7. Still got my uniform on, guys straight on the TV. I sat and watched Channel U all day. Sky, limited channels, you get me? That one was free. <laughs> you man, never had no, used to try to stay no up MTV late to watch base. The, you know what I'm saying? Explicit things. There's no other <laughs> hey, thing is... that the realest, most UK music was ever going to live. It weren't. This is literally like BET. It's like BET. Like BET before it got like how it is now, like the original BET, like where it had like, yeah. Polished. It was just raw, uncut, and it was just what was going on. When my telly goes on, always skips over Channel U, definitely. Grand reverse rap. If you're from UK, that was the one. It was the pirate radio station of TV. Yeah, I think I would agree. A channel hey. for you. And when they said you, they mean us. And when they mean us, they mean urban. When they mean urban, they mean black and ghetto. Just any Tom, Dick and Harry would be next to Kanye West and it was like lit. It looked pirate, it looked raw and authentic, and it was, but it was a proper channel, it was TV. You'd have everything from Dizzy Rascal to Podgy Figures to was it Skrilla Kids. Channel U was putting people on. They could have done a video on a phone, they will accept it as long as the song is banging. It's not like a free for all, but it was just like more open. That platform made stars. I love Shizzle. Shizzle was, ah, uh, it was straight up brilliant. He had the girl upside down with the legs in the air. <laughs> An era where music was. I've literally never ever seen Channel U. I knew it was a thing, they had the one, um, guy of Asian descent and he had like a, a, a MTV Cribs type of vibe to it. Somebody told me about it and I was like, huh, Channel U? I was like, okay. This is good for me. To be, to know the culture and be so in depth with it, this is a good, like, need to know what this is. Baby. It's more unfiltered. Everyone was just trying to think. It's my cook. Might have just bugging out. And it's sick, because that's how he felt. There was some group called Heaven Sent Fogs. I don't even know if anyone even remembers, but I remember everyone. It's what sent it into the countryside. Grime is just, 
in everybody's homes, up in Manchester, up in Birmingham. We played the greatest hits from the urban streets. Will, you know? Mom, present. Billy, present. Dad? Dad? <laughs> yeah. If you know, you know, innit? Oh, yeah. The best channel to come on Sky, in my opinion, other than Trouble. Roadside had get that door on there. Even songs like Bow for the Wolves, you know what I mean? Who remember that? <laughs> in terms of making black music travel outside of London, Channel U was everything. Channel U was a hard knock school, man. Back then, we would just go up to Channel U. I know it's based at Old Street, just past the congestion zone. So a man them used to, I think, park their car up and then walk across. For independent artists, it was a major transformation. It was a place where we sharpened our tools massively. Channel U helped us create a network. So for the first time, we were music managers as well. We were editors as well. We were cameramen as well. We were at the beginning of something total. That big nasty? Editors as well. We were cameras. Hey. We were at the beginning of something totally. Bro, always been big his whole life. That's New, tough. you know, and we just built up our empires at that point from there. If you're on Channel U, <laughs> you're actually doing things. Face the pain and strife in life journeys. Learn from mistakes in life journeys. Uh, dreams and life journeys. Keep your mouth out and don't concern me. Cut out the hype from life. Like I say, if you don't know Channel U, she's too young for you, bro, because Channel U was the channel, bro. I don't know Channel U. <laughs> you feel me? Rome, Italy. Okay. Stuart Lund, interview. Okay, Yeah, all good. I'm Stuart Lund. I was the co-founder of Channel U along with Darren Platz. The idea for the channel came from Darren. It was Darren's idea. Uh, Darren's business was premium rate services. He was selling ringtones and, and competitions and, and similar services on the phone. He'd been thinking about the box and realized that it made economic sense to make a channel which was a little cooler than the box in terms of its music content. I think we did actually toy with the idea of having the name of Cool Box, but unfortunately, we decided against that. We wanted something which was viewer focused, so Channel U is about you. Neither of us had any experience in music, neither of us had any experience in television, but business is business. You do your research, you talk to a lot of people. In terms of practically how we did it, we, we raised the finance for it, uh, some from ourselves personally and some from external investors. We needed to get the Ofcom license to broadcast, we needed to have a deal with Sky for the programme number. We needed to have a deal with the satellite owners for space on the satellite. And then we had to have the technical side uh, put together. I think we wrote a lot of the software in-house for that. From memory, we launched on Valentine's Day in 2003. 2003. We knew the day it was going to go up, but we didn't know what time, so we were still... 2003? Gee, I was in eighth grade in 2000. Or I was a freshman in high school, maybe. Valentine's Day? Yeah, I was a freshman in high school. That's when LeBron's... Is that LeBron's first year in the league? Yes. Staring at an empty screen and then it just magically appeared and uh, it was a hugely satisfying moment. Before Channel U came about, it was very limited, really. I mean, it was strictly down to power Skinny radio man. station and word of mouth. Because in them early times, it's like we did have great examples from different artists and then the scene kind of went the quiet. Wretch. The bar was set by So Solid, right? So I guess Sincere. for like young rappers, MCs coming up, you really looked at so solid videos and you would have assumed that is all that there was. There was a decline after the UK garage sort of scene sort of uh, diminished. So it did kind of feel like the door was closed, the television door was closed, maybe the radio door was closed. We couldn't get on radio, that's why we made pirate radio station. The pirate radio station comes with that premise of it's pirate, so not everyone needs to know about it. If you know about it, you know about it. If you're in the inner circle, you, you're in. I watched a full season I watched the entire show of people just do nothing, and I didn't know why. I should have understood that. I knew it was underground, but people that couldn't get on regular radio, they made pirate radio. Okay, got it. In there. Pirate stations were mad local, unless you was on a good one, like a Rinse FM or something. They might cover a good portion of London and a little bit outside. But if you're on some of the smaller stations, the reach might not be as wide, and you're more likely to get licked down. I've been on small radio stations. You're doing your thing, you're MCing them before you know it. There was so much lack of output, so much lack of platforms. People were just willing to do anything. 
we just literally used to just drive around. You're literally it's bullying people oh, road to buy your just CD. buy your CD and bullying realistically them. there's no way for them to hear it. They're kind of buying it on hope. So you go to a record store and you put like maybe like 10 CDs in the record store. You come back and if they've sold five, they give you the money for the five and return the other five so you can take them to another store if they're not selling fast enough. So that was sale or return. We used to just do everything just fully manually. You had to be determined. I mean, you had to really... Man, this is when people were really putting foot to ground and really, really hustling for what they love. You had to really love this to do it. Like, now you could just... Eh, I could do this part time. Let me just throw something on the internet. Maybe if it hits, you know what I'm saying? Love music. You have to want to be an artist. You have to want to be an MC. You want to be a rapper. You want to be a DJ. You want to be a producer. It was about going to different areas with your friends, spitting in youth centers, house raves, recording sets on tape. Someone would sling them around the ends. Going to raves, you're not getting paid. Driving to bloody Newcastle just to get heard. If you ain't on the eight till ten, and you're doing what they call. Back then, graveyard shift. Yo, I'm on the radio, check for me in four to six, my guy. No one's listening apart from the man going for them construction rail in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> to get on TV, you know, you couldn't do that without having a record deal. You couldn't do that without having a certain budget. It was all about DVDs. At that time, if you made a music video, that's where it would go on the DVD. Like, after your interview, then your music video would come in and people would know the song's coming out. We had to film, edit, color grade, when it goes and they all come out. You turn it over and some of them's not burnt, then that's a loss. Then we had to cut out the, the, the cover. So the whole process was silly hard. There was a few different DVDs. I'm sure Streets Incarcerated was around them times, uh, Risky Roads, Dark and Cold used to do something as well. Bounty Blood. Losers and Mice do the decks. The things people used to do for their craft just to be a part of the culture. Just to, these people started the culture. That's, that's. That's tough. Practice our aim high. When you're distributing it, you're not selling it all the time, especially to shops. You're leaving it there and that's your money and then you've got to go and do promotion. And again, what is promotion? It's word of mouth those days. With a DVD, you have to wait till it comes out. You have to go to the Wembley market or whatever market's near to you. People would have to know where the record shops are, have the money to go and buy them and, and a whole lot of things. So a lot of younger crowd obviously wouldn't have been able to do it. Then you might watch it, then you might lend it to your brethren or you might just spare things. <laughs> but now, with Channel U, it was every day, innit? The original music choice was put on by Charlie Buthin, who we'd recruited to manage the music content. There was absolutely no urban focus in the original brief, so it would have had things like Eminem, Foo Fighters, I think it was Christina Aguilera, there was Nerd on there, things like that. But Charlie's music focus was very much the urban side of things, and very quickly, the playlist moved in that direction. But it was mainly DMX, it was 50 Cent and people like that. Very little was UK based. My name's Ricky Blue and I was a music and promotions manager at Channel U. In the very, very beginning stage of Channel U, the content was like crazy. Like there'd be a rock video, there'd be a rap video. They were struggling for content, so there was no rhyme or reason to it. Ricky came from a background which was much more street oriented and that's really where that genre of the music came in from. Um, I was in a group with a bunch of my brothers from school and we'd shot a video that we spent about six grand on, and there was nowhere to play it. And we used to sell our CDs on the street, that's what we was known for doing. While I was on the journey of doing that, I met this guy called Charlie, and he was like, look, he's looking for content. Of course, I've, I've got content sitting there, you can have that. And I knew a bunch of other artists who were in the same predicament as we were in from the circuit, whether that be Estelle, Black Twang, loads of others who were all on the circuit at that time. And so he was like, look, can you help me get some content? And I did. Actually, I started doing voiceover work for the channel for like some of the competitions and whatnot. So I just building up a relationship with them. Charlie and Darren and Stuart must have had some kind of fallout and then Charlie was just gone. And then they just contacted me directly and asked me if I could basically manage the channel and get the content for them. And I was like, why not? At that time, it was myself, Kate, who was head of programming, I believe she was. And then Carly was like Kate's junior, if that made sense. Then Patrick, who was like my assistant for a period almost, or my junior. 
Right, my name is Patrick Abuccio. I was in charge of video submissions at Channel U and also a co-producer on the Ill Art Show. I used to get the US songs like Jay-Z Song Cry, which never played in the UK, Beanie Siegel, Feel It In The Air, a lot of the Snoop videos that weren't released in the UK. Did some sneaky stuff and got those videos on because I wanted us to have the best of both worlds. Okay. We've got Stuart at the back in his room, but we're pretty much just running the channel. Talking about the science of social deprivation. From here to wherever in the cancer, the states of man are struggling. The poor lower working. It's like watching, watching something like this, like, <clears throat> it makes you grateful for how easy it is to do stuff now. <clears throat> But it's like a it's like a it's like a love hate thing now because like any any and everybody is trying to be you know what I'm saying be an artist, which oversaturated what makes it even harder to really get on really really get on because everybody can be a SoundCloud underground you know what I'm saying whatever but like for a label to really look at you you got to be doing some astronomical now because of the oversaturation you know what I'm saying but. I kind of became aware of Channel U from the start because it wasn't there when we was doing our thing and then Ricky mentioned it. It was just doing his rounds in the community. Everyone was talking about it because it was a new platform that was showing our music and we could get our music on there. When that channel came around, it was like a big thing. I came out of um, an establishment back into my freedom. <laughs> I came to Carnival and someone you came out of jail, buddy. They told me, we recognize you, you're skinny man. And I was like, well, how could you recognize me? They went, channel you, innit? And I'm thinking, channel you, what's channel you? And my friends told me, yeah, there's a video of yours, Cancel the State of Mind, playing on it. I was like, well, this I've got to see. So I took my time out to go to somebody's house who I knew had Sky Television. And I sat there, I think for the whole day, waiting to see my video come on, which made me look at all of the videos that were on there, like, what is this? This is brilliant. Blood. You go to sleep round here and have nightmares. Wake up and find the worst reality is right there. The difference is in my dreams, I'm always running scared. But in reality, I'm grown, I'm coming prepared. So now who's gonna wanna run up and become a goner? Everybody's gonna wanna get us, but they're on a long skinny. Hey, he got flow. I ain't never heard of him. That's tough. <laughs> man's council of state of mind, that got rinsed. And Skinny Man's album just propelled, like it done some crazy independent numbers. My name's Peter Murray. I had a commercial relationship with Channel U. I had an artist at the time, Slim Dutty from Northwest London who was signed to the label. It's just like, go across the network looking for these music channels that you think you might be able to get your artists on. And there's late at night, and I came across this station called Channel U. They were playing a lot of rock music, but the flip side is they was also playing some hip hop and some R&B. And I thought, you know what, this time I'm really doing some publicity for Slim and beggars can't be choosers, I'm gonna hit them up. And I did, and I got through to a guy called Charlie Bluthin. He liked the video, he liked what Slim was, and he started promoting. Beyond that, me being the commercial person that I am, I could really see some commercial opportunities there. At the time, the channel didn't really have quality advertisers for that particular audience. I met with Stuart Lund, and I said, look, how about you just sell me some airtime, and I'll fill that airtime with TV commercials, nothing more. We brought significant revenue in, and that revenue would have aided the channel's growth and aided the channel's development. The ratings. Me over here taking in business tips. <laughs> and thinking of you. It was a rather unique experience. I think mean, we had kids from all over and they were making their own content and they were seeing it on national TV. Something which was pretty much unheard of, really. Not just in music, but It's cool, man, because stuff like this gave, like, like, gave a generation hope. You know what I'm saying? When everybody's in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Coming off the, the crack epidemic and uh, trap God and then this gave people like, oh man, this probably gave a lot of people hope. Like, dang, I could be on TV. Let me let me get off this let me get off the street stuff for a little bit. Let me try put some effort in. Which is the same thing, you know, YouTube did in a sense, you know what I'm saying? So once Soldier Boy broke the code for YouTube and like let everybody know, like, hey, we can upload rap videos and get recognition. It was up again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No more putting your foot to pavement and hustling like this. You got to hustle a different way. 
It's tough. It's all a hustle though. In any walk of life. I also made sure that if we got a video from Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, Coventry, that it got on because the channel was being shown nationwide. It feels good, that street love. I tried to give it back in words, back against the war. Now I'm back in first. Back off my coat, back on my turf, back on my post. Written notes from my heart through the back of my throat. Hungry for bread, heavy with plans, but look sharp. For a mark feds, regular mans get sucked off. UK rebelling slave with way to get paid looking that way to get changed would I get out of this race? Um me and Nuts were from um the ends, official ends. How are you not gonna spot me on camera? We did what's going on. Holding a memory lane and goddamn memory lane, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's true family. Uh-huh. Yo, where we taking them? Chung families difference on channel u was always the group's quality control in terms of the quality of the video stood out the sound of the music married with that quality control of the video for me is what looking in from the outside just stood out we was trying our best to compare ourselves to the americans we're trying to get like high definition film cameras and lenses we're trying to get the greatest pixels and the greatest see and that's where a lot of people still get lost to this day I already know what he's going to say. Like, you don't got to be the greatest. People like to see the elevation. They like to see you come from the bottom and work your way up to a level of, 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 of uh, you know, greatness. They like to see the growth, man. That's what that, that be stopping a lot of people, man. Like, oh, man, I can't start YouTube. I can't start rapping because I don't got the best studio. I can't, I can't record no videos because I don't. All I got is my phone. Man, if you don't get on your phone and record that video, bro, it's grading. We're trying to get 35 millimeters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the money, come on, clock. The West chicks, they were the classic attack. They dress slip, act right, kind of chicks you would wife. Me, I wasn't really down for the drama strap. Oh. So I. Uh, Big up Luke Biggins, he was the connoisseur, he was the, the mastermind behind our visuals, behind our imagery because he made our videos look amazing for the money we gave him. He gave us a great conveyor belt of phenomenal videos and UK, they gravitated to us, they rated us. And we kept trying to compete with the Americans. Let's get a video as good as that. I'm looking at 94 videos, 95 videos from the States. Then can we make our videos look as good as that for the UK? Sometimes Luke Biggins. I never worked for Channel U, but I was around nine times out of 10. In the Channel U days, Luke was doing all the videos. One time I remember sitting there at night time watching Channel U and I literally had six videos back to back, which I directed, played. Luke was a friend of ours. He did my earlier videos and he was the one that was like telling me about the DigiBeater and how, what we needed to do next to get it onto TV. This definitely sounds American. Great, great, great for this one. For me, like my biggest budget, I spent 12 grand on a video. Yeah, and I would never do it again. But at that time, yeah, that was me trying to make something more commercial that would stand out. Luke Biggins, big up Luke. Epic, we done it on film. I'm not sure on the mills no more, but it was high end. I said, it doesn't matter what the budget is, it just has to look the tin car. I didn't feel like I was just representing myself. I felt like it was like West London as a whole. Shot the video, I rolled up to actual Channel U, and we just chilled outside, like, waiting to see if somebody, like, can kind of pop out. So this black brother come out. I said, yo, my name's Podgy. I shot a video. Just kind of let me know from the jump, can this work now? If it can't, let me go back to the drawing board and let me know what can work. Yeah, I just respected that. And they, they just had a, they, there was a vibe about their movement that I, I think I liked how they held themselves, if you see what I mean. I know that he put a lot of effort into his product. Like, a lot of effort. And then I think we just had my dogs one day, we must have turned it over, a couple of videos came on and then, bow, it came on and it was like, raw, like, raw, like. Yo, this beat got me feeling good, yeah. 
She spit hard like I think I should. Yeah. I keep couple fires in the hood. Yeah. Red brick passageway, Mr. Clubs, let's go. All the girls love the jump up. Yeah. Pudgy, are they there when they jump so Yeah. Pudgy, I got it. It's like, yeah, he's right. It's kind of like a gigs for a sound like, or I don't know who came first. So. <laughs> yeah. He was saying some stuff, man. You knew through that 25 bags in, you weren't going to get it back. But you knew the man them who was outside with their videos. Even Al Sterling, his video was cold, man. I just wanted to stunt. I just wanted to flex. I'm going to be real. We just wanted to flex. Like, this is what we're doing over here. I don't know what you're doing over there. We step in the club, all icy dark. We pop bottles, better tell your wifey dark. I'm with 10 hungry thugs that like to buck. Macking chicks in short skirts that like to have... <sighs> When you popped on Perry, your chicks will come over, it won't take very long. I think the man them just wanted to link gal. That's really and truly, that's what it is. Man them just wanted more gal. <laughs> so if that's the platform that's going to make man get the love, then that's what it's going to be. Sincere, a good friend of mine, I grew up with him like, um, he's like a brother. Um, I think we went halves on our videos. I swear I'd met Luke Biggin and then brought me along to meet him and then we split the money so basically we could get the equipment and the crew for two days. You have it on a Saturday, I have it on a Sunday. We were doing stuff like that. So I was fortunate to have like a good kind of like connection of people around me that were all at the same level and were all trying to rise and, and get recognized. I shot that's not gangster and sweet. You shot. And that's that's you know it's crazy man, right there, that teamwork, that togetherness is what's missing in a lot of areas, especially the UK. You know how Atlanta has that. Atlanta has that. And that's why they're thriving. They got that togetherness. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there's enough for all of us type attitude. Everybody else is so cut though, they don't want to work together. That's why they can't be successful. You know what I'm saying? Flow Fashion, which is sick, but they both went on to be Channel U Classics and Big Rhythm. Flow Fashion is actually about getting into credit card debt. But because we were African, Everyone just assumed that it was about fraud. I roll up to the bar, then I swipe, swipe. When I'm filling up my car, I just swipe, swipe. When I'm shopping for the gums, gotta swipe, swipe. Stay. You do sound scammy. <laughs> I can have anything I like. Why? Why are you wearing that shade? I don't know, I'm just following the fashion. And I'd be in central London or something, and I'd just be like shopping normally, and I'd see people come up to me. But I'm like, I'm not doing fraud. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Little Derek's doing outreach, yeah. yeah. Little Derek's doing fine, fine. Little Derek's doing cool, cool. You know how we do. My biggest record on Channel U, it was Little Derek. You know what I mean? It's actually just my biggest record. Like, I've had records that have sold more, but people don't remember those records like they remember Little Derek. It's flavor. You know what I mean? It's like Little Derek's doing okay. Little Derek's doing fine, fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially at that time, people wasn't trying to do that. It was like a snapshot of the time. You know what I mean? And anybody who remembers that kind of period, always kind of Little Derek is probably one of the records that they're drawn towards. And it went on to, I mean, the producer of Little Derek went on to produce Empire State of Mind for Jay-Z. You know what I mean? Little Derek was one of Nipsey Hussle's favorite records. You know what I mean? Hit me up and he was like, Damn, I didn't know that. R.I.P. Mip, I gotta listen to this song. Not UK, it's just one of my favorite. Like, it, it traveled so far for something that was not even supposed to be a single, you know? And it was just that Channel U era that gave it, that spark enabled it to grow further. Stepped out my house, I'm feeling fresh and brand new. All who did the trim, Rihanna done the hair, do. And everything I wear is new. My hat is she jacket, Puma top box, fresh jeans and Nike cam. Sprayed a little Versace dreamer on me too. So every girl that passes like, ooh, woo. Police don't pull us over like, ooh, woo. Cause the kids watch MTV and Channel U, U. I started realizing how big Channel U was when I started going outside a lot more and people were recognizing me and it was like, oh. This channel's quite big. It's my time, like it or not. Caught a ride, can't fight. This thing will take you with it like a landslide. My mind spitting rhymes, refined as old wines. No game since age five, I hold mine. I don't know what the arrangement was from a business perspective, but in terms of the operations of it, Stuart was like, was the main guy in the office. It was my sole priority at the time, and Darren was much more of a, a sort of silent partner for the first three years. And then Darren became more visible and was around more until Stuart was no longer there and then Darren was there most of the time. 
the chairman, a guy called Paul Dixon, who was one of the investors, and I didn't get along, and the channel was losing money, and I think it's fair to say we decided by mutual agreement that I was going to depart. I mean, for me, Channel U was Darren, and it was Cat. You know, Cat really was the face of it. I think anyone that kind of knows Darren probably met him in a pub, <laughs> and um, and you know, like that was exactly the case. Okay, Cat. <laughs> You was around when Channel U got established and you still look like this? Hey. You got it. <laughs> like I was out with some friends. They introduced me to him. Originally, like, he's got, like, northern roots as well. So, like, we were just chattering away. And I remember him saying to me, he was like, oh, like, you know, like, you're funny. If you ever want a job, take my card. He originally gave me a job to take my card. What is that accent? Uh, dang. Can't even think of it. But, you what know, is like, it? Answer the phones, do a bit of admin, like all that kind of thing. It was a lot more than just a nine to five. It was very much like I lived and breathed Channel U every single day. So my role at Channel U was um, controlling and overseeing operation of the booking agency. Coming from Soul Solid Crew, one way of getting yourself promoted was doing live gigs. So I came up with the idea of why don't we set up a booking agency using your platform. Give the independent artists an opportunity to go out on the road, not only to promote the music, to make money, and it's a full circle uh, revenue, which kind of folds back into the That's smart. Where is my pencil and paper? Because you know, a lot of these ideas, a lot of, nothing is brand new. <laughs> nothing is brand new. They just doing the, the same process over and over again to be great again. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, you're right. Today pockets to create more videos more and then at the end with that notoriety go and get a record deal i mean darren platt created a company together called hype city i'm shorty a lot of people knew me as chanel i was the bookings manager at hype city in conjunction with channel u darren was a so i <laughs> was the bookings manager at hype city in conjunction with channel u darren was a sort of person who would love any sort of backlash because to him something's good's happening he would even tell me, like, shabs, 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 shabs. People have come into the office today. Oh, they're going mad. Someone tried Shabsy. to do this. Somehow. But rather than being a man that's um, sort of like wary and scared, it would be laughing and go, they got to deal with it. Ah. And he would laugh about how the whole staff's got to deal with it. And he knew when to jet. We all went to prison, came out. We all went to. He was on Danny Dyer's Most Deadliest Men. It's crazy. Prison, came out, and I saw Channel U. Yeah, it's funny, because for y'all that's watching it or seeing me for the first time, yeah, I really got this knowledge. <laughs> I really do this. It's not part-time. I didn't just stumble across this. <laughs> I be watching the UK stuff. I sent like around eight videos, and no, no one was getting played. And then I found out where Channel U office was. There was no security. You go down this one little alleyway in Lever Street, I think it was and got up the stairs, and it was, not, it, was, it was access free. So anyone can bowl in at any time. Me and Inch pulled up our motorbikes. You could see everyone looking out the windows and like, oh shit. And as soon as you come in, Kat's just sitting there, tatted off. There was always some kind of madness going on. It was always absolutely nuts. And I think what had happened until I got there is that like, if anyone turned up and like, you know, rang the buzzer, they'd be like, yes, yeah, ignore. I said, well, yeah, we're PDC, and I was like, oh, yeah, we know who you are. Okay, I got the video now. Who do I give it to? And when does it get played? Cat came and she's like, no, it don't work like that. You knew where the funding was coming from on a lot of the videos and everything, and, like, a lot of these guys, like, putting everything into it. A lot of them putting their lives on the line, and so, like, for me to turn around to people and start saying, oh, your video's not going on, they took it really personally. I kind of, like, was being a bit, like, you know, those days, it's a bit, like... And then, like, computers had ended up getting tucked around the office. But Cat was cool, though. She handled the situation good. Eventually, we had, like, four videos playing back-to-back, -back. and then I think literally, like, Three months into that, the police done a big raid on all the record shops for PDC, CDs and DVDs, and then Channel U took the videos down. So we was on there for like around, I think, three, four months straight. And then that's it, we didn't go on there ever again. It's murder. When Manchester terra firma. It's murder. Ray's getting buried in suburbia. Murder. Man shutting rock to make a earner. It's murder. Murder. It's murder. It's murder. It's murder. 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 
it's crazy because you know the policing of music in the UK or in general, but in the UK is seems like it's always been around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's tough. Even in Channel U days, they was breaking in, taking music down. Of course, we know what PDC was because I watched Danny Dyer, but like this. They was definitely listening to 50 Cent in this era. Right here. Slightly, like bass might have had the better quality, but kind of for us, the better music was on Channel U. Like, you know what I mean? That's where our music was, not like. All the Amer like yeah, all this American stuff, yeah, that's all cool. But us here, we was on channel you. MTV Base is a brand, they were doing well. But the UK content they had was sanitized. So we wanted to keep the integrity, but also make sure that we don't lose ground quality wise. So when Biggs came with Paul Blimey and that video was just amazing. And then G Fresh came with the quality sure. of the videos that his company were directing and North Star came. The video quality was different. Where we were spending like, maybe like between five and 10 grand on a video, I think they man would like spend like 30 or something crazy like that. So their videos were always something to look forward to. Yeah, I've come too far to turn around. Can't look back, I need to turn my life around. I need to learn my life. It's crazy, man. People went to spending, having crazy, crazy budgets on videos. Like mid 2000s, 2010, to when, they, to when YouTube came along and, and, and 2013 came along. When Drill came along, they let you know, like, hey, you don't really need no real budget for these music videos. Let's go in the basement, let's go on the porch, let's go on my grandma's, you know what I'm saying? Let's just shoot this video. Let's give it that in real life gritty look, and, and here it is. People always like something they can resonate to, something that they can feel like, oh man, I could do that too. They're gonna watch it more. <laughs> I'll take it down the foul and make my wife be proud. I know what life is now, know my life is now, know my life's a mountain And I'm trying to reach the top, I'm kind of high, don't want to drop, don't want to drop Thousands, it's a special era, man. Late '90s, early 2000s, 2000s for music. It was great. It was a good time. It was a good time looking back on it, man. Really, 2000s. I don't know nothing about the '90s, man. But the 2000s, it was it was up. The '90s R&B was fire. Though. <laughs> I'm honestly watching this and I didn't even know the UK had a time period of music that involved all of this. Like, it, uh, like I know we had ours in America, 
And it's very similar. I'm not going to lie. A lot of this stuff looks the exact same. I feel like almost for every song that I've seen that we got an equivalent. time in, in, in music. 90s R&B, early 2000s R&B? Come on, man. What's beating that? In, in Anywhere on earth, almost. R&B was better than, than rap in early 90s, man. Early 90s, 2000s R&B was better than rap. And I, I'm willing to argue about it. That's why we can never, that's why it's so hard to get new good R&B artists. That's why it's so difficult because it, it, it's coming out of an era where music was timeless and it was the greatest. <laughs> Who do we have now? And I'm, this is no knock on anybody. Chris Brown fire, of course. Chris Brown. That's it. In my mind. Shit. And all of a sudden, you just saw everybody just rolling out these better quality videos. And the tag of Channel U being that channel that has the weird videos and the dead, like, technicals, that was going. And that's when we decided at the time, let's rebrand the EPG. Space had something called Beats, Rhymes and Life. So I said, let's call out beats with a Z, because that's so cool. Grime and life. When we started doing that and changing things, people started to see, oh, right, Channel U trying to step up now. And our ratings in that demographic was actually better than MTV at that time. this girl, she was such a hottie. Everything about her just made me feel naughty. Skin tight dress was stuck to her body. Thought to myself, gotta make a shorty. We wanted to be glossy in it. I was just trying to be with my American counterparts. I remember coming up, I was just like, I'm trying to do it as big I as everybody like that. else does. So we shot the video, half of it was in Portugal, the other half was in London, like in some club called Tantra. I was trying to do it as big as possible. <laughs> we come into my room, Channel U gave us a different audience though, like it was the streets, innit? We come into my room, Channel U gave us a different audience. This right here, how you know it was early 90s, early 2000s, my bad. Not mid top Air Force Ones? Nobody, these are almost obsolete. You don't see these no more. We all wear low tops, G Fazos now. Like, you don't see a mid top no more. After like 2007, you would never see a mid top. <laughs> Maybe earlier than that, honestly. Audience, though, like it was the streets, innit? That was where people were seeing it every day. Yeah, I'll take you to my room. 
into my room. We don't need to tell nobody. Yeah. Come into my room, into my world. Won't you come into my room, into my bedroom? Honestly, I can't even tell that some of these R and B artists from the UK are even from the UK. Like you can't even, I, you can't even tell. There's no accent when they get to singing. I was 17 years old, going on 18. That summer, it was like coming to my room on the R&B side and like POW was doing everything else. Graffiti on the side of the Air Force Ones is crazy. Now that I'm looking back to it, like I wanted some graffiti Air Force One so bad, and I'm, I'm so glad that I never was able to do it <laughs> to match the graffiti T-shirt. Oh man, with the two, with the six times big baggy pants. Oh. Firstly, I want to just... 2004, yeah, I was... Hey, 2004, I was in high school. I was a sophomore, maybe? And that's when I got like got a job. My drip was immaculate. White tees, always fresh. I had every pair of shoes that you can imagine. I don't care. Chris, every time a shoe... This is a time where you could still go into Foot Locker and get the newest release Jordan without having to go through all these sites and do all of that dumb shit that they got going on now. But like, this is a great time. <laughs> Let's make a tune with the man them. When we used to go on radio, there used to be about 10 men in the radio station. At that time, we was doing rallies. Me after you, after you, that was like the thing. So I wanted to create something like that on the record, but create the energy we create on the radio station. <laughs> bar relay is basically the eight bar rhythm there was a time in grime where producers just kept it simple where they just had two the hell is this that's an emac e like a b c d e mac when did it switch to i then Oh man. Parts of the song, one eight bar that will have certain instruments, certain sound, and then it'll flick to another eight bar, and it's just a loop. Young Stark is a part of Music Mob. He kind of changed the game. That post X vibe was probably one of the first eight bar switch songs. If you was an MC doing a radio set, and that came in, you made. Make sure you're there, like, to try and make sure you get your spot on that. You wanna, you wanna buff. Definitely, there's gonna be some tapes of me going off on that rhythm. Definitely. The process of, you know, getting an eight-bar relay all-star tune. Firstly, the beat. The beat's gotta be the coldest. Like, that's my first priority. If the beat can make me move with no bars on it, then I know this thing is mad. So even when I got the pow beat, I was rinsing the beat in my car for months. And I would just start processing people's bars in my head and just thinking, mm, OK, OK, he will sound cool. Then you make the phone calls. The man them come to the studio. There's no emails. There's no, you know, sending man a snippet of the song. I had the CD. Leaf would just hollered at me and didn't really like D -double it. D-double-E. But I picked. D-double-E, um, isn't he? Um... What's going on with DWE right now? Is he locked up or is he does he is he still alive? Something just happened to him, didn't it? I don't want to misspeak, so I'm just going to move the on. The bit that I wanted to be on. The competitive nature, 10 artists, I want to outdo him. He wants to outdo me. He just captured everything about Graham. What we do is I want to outdo him. He wants to outdo me. He just captured everything about Graham. What we done that day is what we do. When that? I was making power, I knew I was always going to do a video. And that was because of Channel U. It took us about maybe two weeks to shoot the video. Mo Ali, big him up because he said, I want to do the video and he's got ideas for every single MC. So he went to 10 different locations. Back then, it was a lot more harder to put things together. We had a more fire party at um, Palace Pavilion because the place is so ramming that we're going to shoot scenes of the video here and then we do the rest of it 
elsewhere. It was already doing its thing on the streets, but I feel like when Power went on Channel U is when it went to a next step. Channel U was man's billboard. Yeah, what, what, what? You're barking up the wrong tree, the spotlight's on me. Start with a few, but how the moon? Are you gonna bust if there's no room? What is the start with a few? Get the dough and move, start with a few. No, I stop, right in the tune. Don't we both, I'm right in the tune. Cause... Channel U ending up being almost like the bedrock of grime was an accident. That was the content that started to come through most. Really we was at a glass ceiling man. because we was exceeding everything. All of our limits as producers, MCs, you know, hosts, rave people, DJ, whatever it was, we was exceeding the limits of that. And we go to the rave and everyone sings our lyrics, but you're not allowed on MTV Bass. MTV Bass was only playing crisp video, 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand video. We were like the plus one to the party when Channel U, it was our dance. MTV Bass couldn't go lower. Channel U went to the streets. All those videos that we had had on Lord of the Decks after our interview. Which is crazy, like, from a business standpoint, like, that's a clearly untapped market at the time, and y'all just completely hovered over it like it wasn't even there. That's stupid. <laughs> they then got submitted onto Channel U. Now kids seeing you, recognizing you off TV. Get ready, there's Dan. Addy is Dan, and the R6 man, that's Dan. Don't disrespect Dan. Do you know Dan? You'll get a box from Dan. And you can't rob Dan. Don't put on Dan, because you'll get off my Dan. Straight up and down. Who's greatest Dan? Make space, I'm here, it's Dan. Scooter, I bust the balls, I shot. Without realising it, Channel U was a massive part of creating what is now British youth culture. It gave an identity to a generation. That's what I just said. Like, it's a whole untapped market that you just hovered right over and somebody came, capitalised and gave a voice to the people, you know what I'm saying? So they really went to text, text, what's it called? Aldi. Let's just say Aldi. Purchase 19 things of foil and wrap somebody in it. Different. Most people who are watching the channel were not informed enough to know that, mate, this guy's not making any money from his music. Because you don't think that far about it. It became very aspirational because I now want to see myself on TV. DJ Cable again. One, come two, come three, come four. Stop, and I'll be conking yours. My night or I'll be conking yours. One, come two, come three, come four. Come, yeah, I'll be conking yours. My night or I'll be conking yours. Let's go. When I roll through the ends up on my hoodie up, when I spit bars, cries like pull up. I'm like, oh, wait, da 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 what they are. And you know, case I'm going See, this, is, this documentary is just showcasing the music that was on there a lot. Which is understood. For a person like me, I had no idea. Me as an American, I'm glad y'all figured it out. Slow it down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Slow it down a little bit. You know? No knock. I'm just saying. You don't want no cash. Waste man. Ask some of that. Get me beyond. Ask some of that. Pro builds like. Ask some of that. Slow hope. Ask some of that. Get me. Get me. Get me. The nasty crews. I feel like I've been getting lied to my whole life that I thought these people were American, some of them. Yeah, 
to the hood. Why? I'm alive with my young guns. Smoke Tiger, how with my young guns? Young guns, young guns. It is black and they're clean in the ground. Do the red, they're my usual tie and nail. Who's first flip heads or tail? Why two on one, it's all with the world. You don't love me. Shit got worse. She was working on a man's body like she was a nurse. Even though I'd done my dirty, yeah, I admitted and said I was sorry. But I can brush, man. I nurse, I will brush, man. No solo, I will brush, man. I got, I will brush. brush, brush. Yo, don't push me, son. I know your mom loves her son. And she don't wanna lose her son. Don't give your mom a reason to lose her son. What you know about it? Head to get beats and hips. It's got bad beats and hips. Money gets me. There was enough grime tunes on there. Bare grime tunes on there at the time. No, 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 no. Don't. I know it's grime and the beats per minute or whatever is high. It's fast. I understand that. But I'm, like I said, like, when y'all slowed it down, it really got into it, didn't it? I get me. It was, it was a good time. I can't lie. Chano Yu was a cold time. Stutter. I got free yard, man. Calm down. Nah, it's a long thing, man. It's Friday now. I gotta see my man. But your man less of a one night stand. I'm not gonna trust you. Pat you, that wrong. That's how it goes. Who the hell is they? Little rascals. W movie, by the way. But. I'm seriously having a grime overload right now. But I get what the documentary is doing, it's moving us through the phases of Channel U. Like, it's, it's move moments. Hey, hey, bars! <laughs> Oh, Chip. Went from Chipmunk to Chip. I'm glad you dropped the monk, my boy. I am the Franks and Savior, Rudo Fravor, Chicken Eater, T High Streeter, Glaze Mo Jumper, Adidas Sneaker, Parada Wearer, Liverpool MC. Two man, 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 Cause I don't want to see the inside that nobody knows. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's it's a lot of nostril for me. You know what I'm saying? You wanna come to my house? Well, you can't be on the long thing in my house. Cause my mom, she soon come back to the house. So after the quickie, you have to quickie get out. Routine check. I didn't take the truth to be checked. Sounds like you routinely check. Any using G's and Chris. You got this and that and that and this probably on our The reason why Channel U worked so well was because there was already a culture there. And what they did is they took the culture and they exposed it to an audience that wouldn't necessarily mingle with us. Garage, I don't care about garage. Sons of this, it don't sound like garage. Who told you that I made garage? Why? Cats got his own sound, it's not garage. They get in the studio, they were not in the garage. Here in London, there's a sound called garage. But this is my sound, it sure ain't garage. <laughs> I'm Antoine, I own a production company called Mastermind. So in terms of the music videos that we shot back in the day, um, we're like the Rep Your Ends South, Rep Your Ends Northwest, SLK Hype Pipe in uh, Iron Appa, interesting stories. Uh, North Weezy, shot that for BMD, Tubby T, Ready She Ready, Gappy Ranks, Beer Man, Drinking Beer. I know you like to drink strong, bro, cause you wanna get strong like beer. But you'll get beat like a bongo, deep in the woods I'm there, so don't come near. And I know you like to drink Budweiser, cause you wanna get wise like brown. But you'll get murked like an insider when he snitches about the town, so. Mastermind was used as the in-house production company to film a lot of the, the content, like the Ill Out show. Channel U for us was a godsend. There was no show like that before 
the Ill Out show. We had little features on the show called, you know, Yards, which was our version of Cribs. So he was getting to see inside. Yards. People. There we go. This is the Wong. This is the episode two. Wong Yards. This is the first time I had ever heard of uh, Channel U when I did this video on the main channel or on this channel. Was it on this channel? Yeah, it's gone now, but yeah. Those houses and how they live on a daily basis and stuff like that. You're talking about the first time people may have seen Dizzy Rascal being interviewed on television, Skepta being interviewed on television, Getz being interviewed on television, Kano. I just want to say good luck on that album, K, man. Thank you. Definitely, man. Go back that home sweet home. Was it out again? 27th of June. There you go. We're going to see you out of Kano. Peace. Hope you enjoyed the Ill Out show this season. As, what do you always say about people that didn't enjoy the show? You can email us, man, at kissmy at suckmy.com or something. Yeah. yeah. Early 2000s beard. Pencil, this is the pencil, pencil, oh, let me get on this side. The pencil joint, pencil sideburns, pencil under chin strap, pencil gold tee. Like, this was not it. <laughs> oh, or email these.com. <laughs> we can, you can. He just gave us the go ahead. <laughs> what is it? You want to dance. But I think it is around this. Whatever end you're going to at whatever time of night or whatever time of morning or however long you have to wait for Crazy Titch to Crazy return Titch, to his Titch. block. You open the door and some dogs just start flying out the door. Isn't Titch in jail right now? For like life or something? I don't know. They weren't running, they were flying. They used to run down the road like, they were, oh man. Titch was a character. I can see you, you can see me. I can see you're not a Titch, you see. You can see I'm a bad boy, MC. Say my name, KZT. I saw you last time. time. You got me black and blue last time. time. On the map, you got through last time. time. I wanna say you got blue last time. time. Titch, you saw us that day. Your head should have got bust that day. day. You would have think you had to hush day. that day. day. Blood, you would have got rushed that day. I'm Carly Cusson. I left school at 15 and went on set as a runner. I met a guy called Digital Dan, and we were about 16, he might have been sort of 17, 18, and we opened up a company called Digital Iris, and we were shooting music videos for independent artists. I think the first one was Wong, Not On A Long Age, which was because Dan was friends with Wong. Wow. Then we made friends with New Brown Flex, and we shot Gash By The Hour. It's the I made those... This was an early 2000s outfit if I've ever seen one. My boy got on a, 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 a collared shirt with a jack with a jacket like with the with the fitted cap. I made all them lyrics on the 472 bus on the way to my uncle's house. I remember that like it was yesterday. Listen, listen, listen. And I draw gash by the hour. The gash in my stash goes up by the hour. Because if I draw gash by the hour, there's more chance of me getting banged by the hour. So I bang bump gash straight for an hour. If you watch Lord of the Dex 2, in the background of that freestyle, there's a boy with a big afro behind him on the left. It's Da Vinci. Hey, you ran flex. Came up to boy and goes, yo, we need to make a tune for that. This brother been long about it. It didn't really transfer. He's got a bunch of beats on one CD. That's how man used to do it at the time, a bunch of beats on a CD. But he's giving it to one of our R&B brethren, VB. <laughs> so he's giving his CD to his brother Vidals, and he's trying to do, sing to this tune every day. But it's the gash brother I'll be every day, trying to sing these tunes like, oh, to get these notes. <laughs> Ain't really coming. I'm like, raw, you know what? Let me just get this CD, give it to Boya now. Man's banged it to Boya. You were trying to get Boya in the studio to vocal that tune. I was like, nah, I'm not feeling the fast, you know? <laughs> Imagine, you were <laughs> feeling <laughs> Back in the days, this guy, he wasn't feeling, he wasn't feeling no one. Bro. You, to get on a Strive, he was hard. I remember, I was like, nah, I was like, Strive. Give me that beat, bro. He's in the yard, a bit grumpy and stuff, so like, who's this guy? I remember, I linked out the first verse, he was like, oh, okay. I linked out the hook, he's like, all right. <laughs> then that's when I came with the admin. You need to add the admin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then we were like, yeah, then he's my like, guy. He's not cool me now. He's not cool me now. Yo, go lay the verse. I said, yo, 
this tune's a bit over fire, you know. We might, might have to do one of them things, you know, like in those big American videos where they got the little thing at the end where you got a next tune. And we just, yeah. Strava goes, I got the beat for that. Play some next dum da dum da dum. I said, nah, 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 nah. I draw gash for the hour. Gash in my slash loads up for the hour. If I draw gash for the hour, more chance I'ma get banged for the hour. I bang off gash straight for an hour. Popularity never goes for the hour. Yeah, yeah, I only bang for an hour. Over time, the death deep, that's so hour. Now watch your front and like she don't want beat up. Watch your front and like she don't show face. She knows when she gets down with beat up, she's always gonna make a comeback like me. Big up Carly's mum as well because that. Literally in shock. <laughs> That car, the start was hers. Her mum's car. You know what I mean? The house, that was her mum's car. You know what I mean? The taxi. You were like, what are we gonna write? What are we gonna write? You know what's so bad? When we bought Dizzy to shoot dance with me video, yeah? He's like, listen, you see that scene where boy's in that bed? I need a scene just like that for dance with me. You see what? I need a scene just like that. Girls rubbing on me, everything. Just like that scene. I was like, but that's Carly's bed. It wasn't even, it wasn't even no plush thing, but you know what? When people see something, it's what they see. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, and at this time, as a group, as new brand Flex, the original formation of it, we're kind of like in a competing with ourselves because people, a lot of people forget Tiny Tempers, new brand Flex. So now I'm like, okay, cool, solo thing. I need records. So I started chatting to a producer called Flukes on MSN, yeah? And then Flukes had sent me Wifey initially, and then he'd sent me like Hood Economics or something like that. So I've just met this guy and he sent me two bangers, three bangers off the bat. So before you know it, I vocal the record is popping off, and then I just hear what, another version, and then I hear another version, then I hear another version, then I hear another version. And all, all of those versions are making my version bigger, but then I'm hearing another version, another version. So I'm like, do you know what, yeah? Like, I need to just do a video for this and I need to put this out like immediately, yeah. Striver? Yeah, I'm surprised it took you seven virgins to know that. After I seen the first two, I would have no, 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 no. Introduced me on MSN to a guy called Tiny who came around my house for pizza. Actually, it wasn't even my house, it was my mum's house because we were like teenagers. Um, and we worked out how to do this music video. I remember going to like Carly and Digital Dan and being like, I need an Audi, I need a mansion, and I want to have a car crash. And they looked at me and they were like, what, for eight bills? And so I think they ended up pulling a couple of favours. Like using like my granddad's cab, the house was my house, the car was my mum's, Tiny bought another car, he bought a girl, someone used their friend's chicken shop. Like it was just everybody, you know, bringing to the table. I did the submissions process and that's how I first ever bought. I... Did I just see a double line? I did the submissions process. Yep, that's what I seen. Oh man, what a time to be alive. When you was going into that barber, hey, let me, can I, you know how you make it? So it's hair, then bald space, then the rest of my hair. What's that, a double lining? Yeah, let me get one of them. It's crazy. Process, and that's how I first ever had contact with Channel U. And then before you know it, I had this video. It went to number one and it just kind of just stayed there. You ring me off the nightly, got precisely nine tightly, gonna be off. But you were one time, like 10 o'clock, but that's life B. And you are my wifey, you look right with your head to the side. Blue jeans, nice shoes, and they get on top. Black shoes from Bassman to Mano Rock. You're a real chick, that's so why I'm in. You sound like do or die. You know how they get that, that fast, they go fast and they melodize and harmonize and they go fast. I'm like, do or die, that's tough. But all of a sudden, I find out they've signed it to a label and they've got Sadie Ammer on it, and that's the official thing. And it's called Fallen and Done. It's very mad because, um, to go back, back to Gash by the Hour, after that video was shot, a lot of people don't know this, but that's the video that got Dan and Carly their job. It's actually what, what for me, that's the changing of the guard. Like, the mastermind troopers were the people that were working at Channel U at that time, and they kind of control all the shows, ill out show, everything. So the formation of how the channel looked, its imagery, its whole demure, it was kind of based on them. Once that old guard was gone, and then Dan and Carly came in, then that's when you get the, the new type of content. So the content kind of similarly has our type of feel to it. I think Darren noticed that me and Dan were doing really wacky shit and said, um, oh, can you come and do in-house filming? We went in-house, we were doing TV shows. Me and Dan did the last series of the Ill Out show. We were like filming constantly. They run like four or five 
pilots of different shows. I think there was ones called Unthugged, the jazzy show, there was all sorts going on. I used to be a proper fan of Channel U. At the time, there was obviously MySpace. I hit up a guy called Digital Dan. I said, yo, listen, MySpace. I'm a cameraman. Bear in mind, I never did camera. Like, I wasn't, that wasn't my thing. I just wanted to be in the building. I was like, look, I'm a cameraman. I'm ready to do anything, whatever. Like, I get a reply, I think, like, the following week. And he was like, yeah, man, come down. I got a show at Ministry of Sound. Tiny Tempo was performing. New Banflex were there as well. I was filming. The video came out shit, obviously, on my side, because obviously I couldn't film. And then he was like, you know what? Like, forget about the whole filming stuff, because obviously you're not really good at it, but you could be a runner. So I was just like, yo, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I came in the game and did what you couldn't. I sprayed the flame and spit how I should. Fakes are bait, they're acting big. I believe you, but I know millions wouldn't. So during the time when I was being a runner at Channel U, I must have said to Digital Dan, I was like, yo, bro, you know what? We should do something like comical, like some comedy or whatever, you know what I mean? Because where I was, a lot of the men in that were on road, they were like real funny. So I'm like, look, bro, man, like, I've got this show idea, bro, yeah? And he was like, yeah, but you're bare shy, and I don't know if you've got the swag for in front of the TV and whatever. And I was like, look, I know it could bust, like. So he was like, all right, cool, like, let me know. So me and Dan came up with the jazzy show. Yeah, go and get yourself a little drink and that. Let me just finish off my work. Let the girl for you. Yeah, fam. Yeah, oh, you're a bad guy. Isn't I know, you? I know, I know. You're asking for it. Sorry, you don't mind, do you? Hey, no, not at all. Hey, Pierre, hey, before you start, I beg you take a picture of me real quick. I definitely hey, want a hey, picture. Hey, if it's go in there or something, can you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, we'll yeah? take some pictures. Hey, nasty, must be catching a picture. Hello, hi. Top of the morning to you, nasty oh. N double N dubs. Whoa! Just what you doing, man? Huh? I was just, I was just here with, no listen, ask Nasty. I didn't do nothing. I was just here with Nasty, just doing his <laughs> eye then. <laughs> right, Nasty, please tell her what I was doing. Uh, do you know what, Dion? I'm going to show you what he's doing. As soon as that went out, it just went crazy from there. Bro, it was on like it was EastEnders. Like, every day it was on. It was on at 5 o'clock on a Thursday. He looks familiar, too. Oh. He was on a t movie I watched for Patreon. I remember him, for sure. It was on again at 10 o'clock on Thursday. It was on again at 3 o'clock in the morning. On well, what movie was that? Was that... Yo, man, what was that? I don't know. Thursday, it was on again at 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday. It was just madness. And it's Bruce up, get me! It's Bruce up, get me! You better stay sharp, get me! Cause I'm late fast, get me! And that's Bruce up, get me! It's Bruce up, get me! It's Bruce up, get me! You better stay sharp, get me! Cause I'm late fast, get me! And that's Bruce up, get me! Darren definitely hired so many people that were unqualified. Ah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Another. A Nova, a Nova hood, an A N U V A hood. Onto their passion. That's what it is. Everybody was not supposed to be in a music video channel office. And you know what I liked about Channel U as well? They just said, you lot do what you want. Like, you just literally had whatever you wanted the younger generation, older generation. There's too many videos. Uh. It's the one crazy. <laughs> I was just like, it's like seeing like loads of other artists that I'll obviously come through with, like having their videos and watching it on Sky, and that was like the next big step. I'm a typical Chinese boy when it comes to me, so they're my Chinese boys. And I'm a typical Chinese boy when it comes to me, so they're my Chinese boys. And I'm a Chinese boy, and I get my downloads of my Chinese boys. It was only on the channel for like a month and a half and then they flipping banned it because there was a um, in the bid where barking each other and they were like, oh, some Vic got about 55 years for it, didn't he? Too cool, too good to be true. A gentleman called Crafty took me down to Polydor and I met someone called Ben Palmer. He worked closely with a gentleman called Big that is from Shepherd's Bush. And he said, well, I've got this group called Unorthodox that consists of two guys. Do you want to meet them? So I heard Silver and G-Kid spit and I was like, 
Let's do it. Now you know they represent in shop. <laughs> hey, the baddest female <laughs> spit around. Don't get it twisted. This, this girl's too hot. I didn't even like no help, no handouts. I didn't like the beat. I didn't want to do it at first. And Silver was like, you need to be first on the song. So we recorded it, and then a guy called Tommy heard it. And Tommy was like, let's shoot it. We can move where we want, no jurisdiction. Close up, shift away, you're causing friction. And I was spit what you call it addiction. We'll see what I, I don't know why she didn't like the beat. She kills. She this is pretty hard. <laughs> see, it's always the stuff that you don't like that blows. Then a guy called Tommy heard it. And Tommy was like, let's shoot it. We can move where we want, no jurisdiction. Close up, shift away, you're causing friction. And I was spit what you call it addiction. We'll see what happens, might not get a bill in a way. When no they released, no help, no handouts with all of her goons in the ends in tees and she was just that rugged girl. This is maybe the first video that got my attention that made me say, wow, who are these lot? When I heard that, yeah, I remember thinking, fuck it, that girl's got, she's flames. I just like their whole style, even the brother with um, the mad hat and the glasses. I just already like see us, whoever he is, he's on smoke. But these guys are mad lyrical. We don't need no help or handouts. Don't put your grand out, we can manage. And we don't need no more talent. My fans will balance with excess baggage. Nah, we don't wanna clash, that's long. Cause we heard your tracks and you sound swaggish. We spit facts, you tell lies. That's why we're gonna be here for young. Your fan is she not big boy up on this beat. I'll be so I remember like following all of them around and like the crowd was just growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. And then his idea was to put it on Channel U. And then the day, like, like when I was told that it was on TV, I was like, wow, this is it for me, I'm gone. <laughs> when Tinky Strider went from Tins in Boots in Sidewinder, spitting with Dizzy and Wiley to them bang, biggest selling male artists in Britain, that transition was Channel U. Channel U made you feel like you don't need to be sad. Well, you can afford doing it and we'll take care of that. To be honest, before that, there was other people within the area, within East, That's that rapid. were close to it, to, had blown in a way, like the Wiley, Dizzy Rascal, so it wasn't new to us, but to have someone from the actual crew, it would felt special. One of the powerful moments for me was mainstream money. After mainstream money hit, that's when the labels took him serious and he was able to um, lock in some record deals and go further into that world. And while I was saying as well, I was thinking, nah, this year I'm trying to get mainstream money and I was really meant it. Tinchy, it made sense. He's that star quality already, man. He's just a star, man. If he, if he didn't do that, he would have been a baller. It was always going to be something. I made the beat, yeah, because it's meant to be an essential song in general, but then I wanted it to expand a bit more. Around that time, I was really close with J2K and Dynasty. Don't get it twisted, this ain't the same. I'm Jay, listen, this ain't a game. Been here for a little while, nothing changed. Just more same and the same and the same. Just knowing their man from the circle. See, I feel like every reactor, if you're reacting to UK music, you should watch this. Because it's good to know where, where, where it come from, where it start, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 I'm not saying this was the start, but this is like, the people was rapping before this, I'm saying, but this, this will give you a good idea of of what you really listening to, like the history of it. And I feel like people, people, you know, a lot of people not gonna sit and watch a two hour show. But I, I'm not a lot of people. I'm gonna watch. <laughs> I yeah, appreciate it. me, like just bumping each other, like rating each other. And he, and he was always like a, a guy that would like reach out, you get what I'm saying? They were clever. Yeah. That was a good one. Rem was a G for that still. Even, I remember he was sitting, where was he sitting? He was sitting in some kind of dock or something, like some yeah. mad tech kind of looking spaceship shit. It was cold. That was cold, man. It was early. Yeah, shout out to Centrals for that. It was early still. My love for the scene grew really quickly. And I think that it was obviously like very much about kind of the people. It's something about Cat that I really like. <laughs> Hey, cat! Hey, cat! What you want, baby? Use a hey, down in the description. 
Yep. The little arrow. Yep. Yep. You got it. That's my Instagram. I love me. <laughs> people and the passion you kind of really got to figure out like what this whole like you know grime scene like was built on seeing some of those videos at first was you married don't let your husband stop you from getting a sneak sneak sneaky link now don't you let him just like oh my gosh but like there was the maddest connection to it it's like you couldn't help but love it because no, I don't see no ring. when you were in the thick of it and you were kind of like dealing with people like on a daily basis and speaking to them and like, you know, kind of understanding what had gone into it. And on top of it, everyone was finding their own way. Do you know what I mean? Like I just kind of like jumped in feet first into this position. Like the grime scene was finding its like, you know, feet in the world. It was another piece to the puzzle. Channel U actually was the mecca of having a space where you could do a tune and a video with 15 man. That was kind of the pattern at that time as well in terms of collectives getting together and just jumping on tracks. I had the hook, I was, where do we come from? I had that, I had that. But I never had a beat, so I was asking everyone for a beat. Ribs, he said to me, Monday made one beat that I think will suit that. He played me the beat, I said, yeah. This is it. I took the beat, I said to Ribs, I said, do you want to be on it? He goes, nah, don't worry, I'll fall back. Don't get me? I said, cool, say no more. That's it, and I proceeded. Where do we come from? North Weezy. How do we make money? Real easy. How do we hate girls? That's sleazy. I was confused, I was confused of the impact. Cause I, I just started from here just to just to put my area on because we're not getting shouted out in the club. Then boom, from there, you know, North Weezy on the map. It's kind of like what 21 Seconds did for so- Hey, Ashley Walters. I didn't know that was your name, but salute. Top boy. It's kind of like 21 Seconds did what? In the club. Then boom, from there, you know, North Weezy on the map. It's kind of like what 21 Seconds did for so- so. 21 Seconds, okay. Then boom, from there, you know, North Weezy on the map. It's kind of like what 21 Seconds did for So Solid. Those like relays and the A-bar thing kind of gave loads of artists an opportunity to shine in a small space of time. Southside, that's where it's coming from. Southside, that's where I'm coming from. When it's say South, you say Runtix. South, Runtix. South, Runtix. When it's say Runtix, you say South, Runtix. South, Runtix. What? Them time there as a youngster going East London and Gala saying raw G to the iron. But I, to be honest, when I, when I laid the track and I laid the bar, I didn't think it was going to be as big as it was. I just went in the studio. I remember at the time being kind of even a little bit nervous. You're seeing big artists like. That's what it always is, man. You never, your biggest stuff, you never think it's going to be that big. You know what I'm saying? And then you just wake up and boom. <laughs> You there, you know what I'm saying? It's just Nike, nasty. That's why I be telling people, man, don't let, don't let you stop you from being great. Cause your own thoughts and 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 what you think of yourself is normally not how other people see you all the time. You know what I'm saying? You're harder on yourself than anybody else could possibly be. Just go out there and do it, man. <laughs> just do it. You be you be stopping your own blessings, man. Just do that. <laughs> You understand? Laid the bar, and then on the day of the video shoot, when my part came on, everyone was singing the bar, and I was like, wow, this is mad. Yeah, so we're doing it. Getting on the eight bar rhythm. Well, firstly, it'll be who you know to start off with. If you're like close to the people that's on the track or who's formulating the track, then that'll be your way through still. I made up a little say, say, you know what, cool, we're gonna get the four crews from the ends, get the biggest producer from the ends, which was Protege at the time. He had the silence of rhythm going at them times. He had loads of rhythms it's popping big, at that time. Active, like, active, active. active. Hey, they getting it, ain't they? What they doing, break dancing? Big part of hip hop. I 
Jordan protege shoes, yo. And he was like, rah, someone come upstairs, I can't remember who. And they were like, rah, it's on, it's on channel you, bro. Yeah. And everyone ran downstairs, man, watched it, and was like, rah, yeah, look cold, you get me? <laughs> like, man, I saw the end product, and then after that, everyone was just, like, obviously, it was MySpace and all them things there. Oh, MySpace, 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 Oh, yeah, that was your first friend, didn't it? Yeah, the first friend in that one, like, Jesus. He's the girl from Sugar. Yeah, this is the girl from Sugar. He got all the girl he Man. did, yeah, got all the girls because he's got the same hair in his head that he had then, innit? So. <laughs> See, for me, like, in a way, in a strange way, like, Channel U kind of brought structure, car. MCs, like, would get bookings and do sets. <laughs> Gonna go back to back with your brethren or whatever, you get me? Whoever's in your crew or whatever. Because of Channel U and now I'm putting out songs, it's kind of changing the PA format, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that was probably what first made artists start performing songs. It's made artists start... Is this Liverpool jersey? Is this a Liverpool shirt? Could be wrong. It looks... Performing songs. I could be a picture of the love I have inside. Oh, my bad. Spurs. I don't know if anyone could ever talk about Channel U, yeah? Right, and favourite songs and not talk about Summertime Merxton. We can't not do that. Yeah, I'm black, cause you're black, so wear that. It's summertime, there was a tour with a little time to walk here, but I come back. Basically, what I done, people would say that my music was like a, a sweet boy's sort of side of gram, like a sweeter side of gram for the girl them to bubble to. Oh. Yeah. About a week later, and I'm billing you. Yeah. You're like, who are you? My name's Aaron. What are you, Darren? No, my name's Aaron. 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 I come at the barber's by scooter, I'm rolling. The sun was beaming, and your body looked swollen. Your clothing matched the bag you was holding. Was holding. Was holding. Was holding. I thought, let me get broke off this junkie. I've been gazing for too long, thinking. It's not like the girl weren't weak. Share the hair down with a little kink, and I like it. The swag was on point, and you know what I'm saying? So I made sure that there was a certain colour and look to what we was putting out, and I knew that it would kind of do well. I think I paid about two grand for that, two and a half grand, two grand for that. I don't have the original now, you know what I'm saying? But at the time, the quality was really good. When you look back, you're like, but at the time, I feel like that set me apart from what was that. Oh man, yes, we know, so you just can't stand stress. And she comes in, what do you mean by a It's crazy how much, <laughs> how much 15 years in like camera quality makes a difference. Like 15, like, this is recording better than anything they had back then. Matter of fact, this is recording better than anything. What I'm shooting on right now is better quality than anything they had back then. That's crazy, the, the technology and how, how it advances in, in such a small amount of time. Back then, it was more like the grime MC thing, so it was Everybody spitting, 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 spitting. But I was more like the artist where look out for the girl him. So when I'm going out, doing the grime thing or whatever, a gal, I come forward, you understand? Gal wants a doctor. Stop, make me walk over. Girl, y'all just read the end, A big accident, you want for your car. You for the end of the newspaper. Joker. You have a man. Yeah. Well, what happened to the women like this, man? Big accident, you want for your Damn! I ain't gonna lie, she top tier. Don't ever let it fool you, man. Girls with no BBLs and no plastic surgery and, and natural women, they still got it. Still, they still taking W's out here. All across the globe. <laughs> you fit in the newspaper. Joker. You have a man. Yeah. Well, me guess, cause you look real stressed, but for real. DVLA for put up on them has a test. <laughs> I mean, Doctor, it, from then till now, still one of the most talented artists I've worked with. I mean, we ended up doing two videos for that because he didn't like the first one. What channel you did for that tune, Got A Man, was, was special. The way that went off, crazy. Girl, you have a man. Yes. We don't see you just can't stand stress. What do you mean by can't stand stress? Girl, them love that tune. Wherever I went, that's the tune the girls them wanted to hear. All right, it's ironic right now, yeah? My thing was interaction. As soon as we put out the first single, So Nice, that would go to my website, my MySpace, 
tell everyone to keep voting for me every week. Any shows I'm at, make sure you vote for me on Channel U. Those were the real charts for me back then. It wasn't even about the national UK charts. I'm in love with the way that you smile and the way that you look in my eyes. So nice. I'm in love with the things that we do when we go out, it feels right. So nice. I'm in love with the way that we chat all night, get along and have no fights. Who says relationships can't work out? I swear, man, that's not right. Look. Even though he brings up my name at the start, a lot of people don't even know I made that tune to this day. I used to get a lot of people's MSNs from their MySpace. Like, used to be on the side. And I would just message people, like, here's a tune, here's a tune, here's a tune. I sent him that tune, didn't really think anything of it. When we put it on the MySpace, a lot of people started loving it. I just remember seeing it on repeat all day on Channel U. Just me in the fields walking through it. So I was gassed, I was famous from there. Honorable shout out to DJ Ironic. It's so nice. I know the girl in the video, yeah. He said it's so nice a whole bunch of times, but you know what? He had bars. He did his thing before DJ Khaled did his thing. And DJ Khaled didn't bar. I don't want to fall in love, but she looks like she fell from above. I got loads of girl tunes just on the low. So obviously, like, I showed someone and they were just going mad about it. Then I showed more and they were just like, no, we're shooting this now. When I think of you, I forget the gun rise. Think of fun times when you're at my side at sunrise. Teasing me when caressing your thighs. You've always got the good advice for twist you and my franchise. Got the eyes some guys fantasize about. You always turn heads like roundabout. The response from that was crazy when it came to the girls. I didn't know. Like when I was writing it or when I recorded it, that it would be like that, but yeah, it was good, it was wicked. Girls are going crazy still. What's this though? E14 Promotions. This is Bomb Squad. Channel U, elevated Bomb Squad. And you think they be capping when they be like, well, I didn't know. I just did it. I just did it. I didn't know it was going to be like this for the ladies. When I was writing, and I was just being, you know, just writing. Get your capping ass out of here. You knew exactly what you was doing. You were writing that damn song in that room by yourself with them roses and that and that Marvin Gaye playing next to you very lightly. You knew what was happening. <laughs> what's on the map? B O N B squad. That you N B was something you can't compare to. We on my family. We went away. You see. B O N B squad. That you N B on my family. We went away. You see. B How's bro hat stand on? Early to, I, hey, listen, this right here is formidable to Cassidy's hat. Like, this is like T.I. hat lean. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. Bro, hat is on his head like this. I'm not going to remove my hat off my head because, you know. E-O-M-B squad, that you envy, what's over, you can't compare. We're family, we went away. I waited like near enough, like three hours of that. Like, oh, I just love myself on TV. And I feel like I just left the room and I just said, Can you see us? Like, yeah, yeah. For a moment, I lost myself. I actually got my auntie to shoot the video for, um, for I Just Wanna. It's really in house, that one. Yeah, that one's in house still. <laughs> As a young kid, I used to listen to Flirter. Flirter was like a legend where I'm from in Northwest London. So that like, star? Me even being on a song with him and then it being on TV. I could tell you the girls were on me. Like, I'm like skin, nigga, well, yeah, I got brain on dogs with dark skin with a skin fade. I'm doing it, doing it for my age, so keep doing it, doing it my way. Keep watching the back off, but I ain't got contacts. But if she's on it, she might be part of the contacts. I remember I was in the studio with JJC Skills. He's the producer for Big Brothers. And he put me in a room with Feng Shui, J-Rock, a member of the Big Brothers. Style G. Cherie's little brother, Ice Kid. And then I had my cousin there, Sick Man. The next minute, we have a banger. Ice Kid, I'm potent. Highly toxic like solvents. MCs talk breeze like air vents. I've been through hatred and torment. Ice Kid, I'm potent. Highly toxic like solvents. MCs talk breeze like air vents. I've been through hatred and torment. You know I get brushed. Why you? Best if you're the dust. Why you? That boy that can't touch. Why you? Best if you're the hush. Why you? You know I get brushed. Why you? Best if you're the dust. Why you? That boy that can't touch. Why you? Best if you're the hush. My you? And it was a so chan. My youth, you know? <laughs> Slim you. Slimty recording. Yeah, Slim Ting. Brings to you on the keys. The big, big link up. Go 
the link up was something that was on the keys. That's an X1? <laughs> like, I ain't never. Big, big link up. Well, the link up was something that was inspired after I see what Leaf will be done with Power, you know? At that time, I was listening to a lot of Little John, that whole. Atlanta sound. I thought, like, let me make something close to that, but with a little grime element. With Kelly LaRock on the hook, she was like known in Garage. She was the female. She done big tunes in Garage. I thought if I put her on the hook and just put all the man them on it, and we made Link Up. None of them flow like we make club raise up like we again. None of them flow like we we're superstars, superstars. Take my time, we just Sorry, the bro just. Jump up out that water and wiggle his body? Like, what was that? What was going on? Yeah, that's what happened. I had thought so. I was just like. I knew I wanted to make the video like crazy. I reached out to Mo Ali. We shot some in London, we shot some out of London, and um, at that time it was a very expensive video for that time. And we done it, and we got through it, and it came out, and people liked it. And it just became like a massive video on Channel U. No, I didn't see that. Seeing top three selected for the first time. What? Top three selected. You were not me. Forget this. Me plus eight on a guest list. You can't even suggest it. But get stiff. I'm top three selected. You were not me. Forget this. Me plus eight on a guest list. You can't even suggest it. But get stiff. I paid like five grand for that video, and obviously, like at the time, that was even breaking my back. And everybody was like, "Are you paying that?" But you got to remember, every time I've dropped. Yeah, them times. It's a level set in business, you know what I'm saying? There's no introduction needed. I'm a genius, and I'm even schooling singers. Next year, Porsche, Beamers, but I like a caution. I'm serious, I'm far from short of experience. It banged in, in our world, but I didn't feel like it banged in the Channel U world. Just seeing what was getting a reaction on Channel U and all the stuff that was in heavy rotation, I could see that the demographic was slightly younger than man. And if I'm being honest, that was the first time I actually really adapted to making something and I could see the ringtone thing going off. And that's why I made mean, Don't Phone Me. Don't act like you don't see me around. You see me every day in the hood. I book some mixtapes and I go to the hood. I might be going up north for the weed. If I come back on the baseline, that don't mean that I think grind is. Live that time, I'll keep it to love. Everyone knows what I represent. Don't phone me just cause you got my number. Don't ask what I'm on, don't ask what I'm on. Don't phone me just cause you got my number. I hate Don't Phone Me, I hate it, I hate it. I adapted to something. Who's my favorite UK artist? Mmm. It's a hard question, man. It's a hard question. There's so many artists that do so many different things. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, Dave. Dave is up there for me. Um, Digga D is up there for me. Queen Face is up there for me, you know, Wretch is up there for me, it's, it's like, it's different, man. If that was the first time you was introduced to me, you would have thought that's who I was. It's not to say that weren't a banger, but I'd just rather it weren't in my catalogue. <laughs> I think obviously, yeah, it started out as business. Do you know what I mean? And I think but what quickly, I think he quickly established was that he absolutely had this passion for it. And I think the thing with Darren, that I think a lot of people grew to know about him was that he had a very big heart and he loved everything that like the grime scene stood for, um, what it was all about. And I think that it quickly became apparent that probably wasn't going to generate much money, but he was going to keep going with it because he absolutely loved it and everything about it. Sliggity slay. All oh, right, cut, cut, see, we're big in the game, Now, just say we're big, like, even, just cut the EA out. Let's go, come, lads. Yeah, man. Come, let's have it. EA Sports were running a competition. I already had a power. I'm being like... Oh, yeah, Potter too, I forget. My bad. EA, whatever. It was always a, a known in money already. So we entered that competition, me shifting Blizzard, but like, as Mayhem, but Mayhem was a bigger crew. There's enough of us in it. Won it. So they said, we'll shoot you a video. Man, a big like EA. Let's get left in AE. Man, fighting is okay. But I'm gonna teach you a get KO. You want more, it's all 
This looks like a, a, a TikTok filter. <laughs> Just recorded this with a TikTok filter. You should know I'm an OG, so right now you should cheat. Mom was gassed. No, we're gonna lie. <laughs> Mom was gassed. Everyone was gassed. Everyone from the ends was gassed. Like, girl used to come past me. Like, big like, yeah, yeah, that was. You get me? Mom was gassed them times. But yeah, it was sick in it, obviously. And them times, yeah, obviously got a video on the telly. You, you've done it. Which traps I've seen more than dads. Cause they clap at these boring actors. Not everyone's big with hard weight. Not everyone thinks they're star face. It gets busy when their plans evolve. And they end up in a can for coke. I hope you're seven like you is bold and wrong. When it was on there, there was definitely a sense of arrival. Because TV's TV, man. You know what I mean? There's only so far me and Getz were gonna go with 50 CDs in our rucksack. Going up and down, leaving it in the shop doing sale and return. This shop hasn't heard of you in Birmingham, so they only want to take five, but you've driven all the way up there. I'm just like, you know what, just take 20. I'm not coming back for no money, but I just don't want you to run out. Hard life. That's what I'm about to explain to you right now, man. Let me let the tune breathe a bit. Everyone was doing like the eight bar switches and all that. You had the youngers doing all the eight bars, but I feel like with me, I always liked making proper substance music anyway from a young age. Being around the likes of Getz, Kano, and all these people, and Ross God, um, they used to make bare songs. The world's gone man, everybody's walking with knives. If not knives, it's knives. If not knives, it's max. Too much guns on the road, this is a known fact. I'm not trying to preach everyone, not saying that I don't roll with they're gonna that roll with the guns. I'll be lying to you, and that ain't the one, no way. Hey, when Hard Life came out, we do what, hey, ah, oh, man. I remember going back to college, I was in first year college. And hey, the response was just crazy. Everyone was like, oh, I swear, you're that, you're that guy, that hard life guy, ain't it? You're that guy, that hard life guy. I felt like I was a hood celeb. <laughs> you got fun. You shouldn't have that. If that was me, man, I wouldn't have that. You back in the days, man. It's cool, man. The channel, you changed a lot of trajectory of a lot of artists, you know, life for the good. You know what I'm saying? They reached down and brought up, you know? That's what's up. Like, I didn't even think it would do anything special. Like, we just wanted to be in the same pool that everyone else was in. Get me? Went to number one, so I, I can't complain. Yaga, yo! You know who it is, isn't it? It's scripts and poet to bomba. Them days, seeing is mad believing. So if it's on television, you're doing something right. So the fact that me and scripts were on television, like, I, I f couldn't chat shit, and they were good at that. My name's Clubbing, my name's Gold, yeah. my first name's Paul, and my government style, what a simple rum style, so you're never gonna. No. Your chest up like gas, but you're never gonna. No. Think you're a pro when you're rhyme slow, but you don't even know that you're never gonna. No. And you can't get a wool, so you're never gonna. No. Struggling to get a deal, but you're never gonna. No. But you flow sick, but you sound like a prick, and you're girls in my dick, so you're never gonna. No. <laughs> so me know. By that time in grime, everyone knew who you were if you were someone, and <laughs> we weren't someone, so. I'd imagine we pissed off a lot of people when we dropped that video. Yeah! What's the deal? What? I'll be there in a sack I was having a big tune, so I knew I needed to get ready for my visuals, but I needed to make my thing. I needed to take this TV thing to... I need to be a superhero, fam. I need... I need some superhero team. What, like, bro? Yeah, bring that. I'll shut the high road down, bro. The whips are stopped like this. What's happening? There's a black dreadlock superhero. What? What? Why? It's the Mark Man. Never gonna fix the Mark Man. Unbelievable. Come to the Mark Man. Who for the green and purple man? Cause it's the Mark guy. Never gonna fix the Mark guy. Come to the Mark Man. Who for the green and purple? Yeah, I had it in the video to cap. Put it on the channel. Cool videos rotating. I'm gassed. Obviously, man in the yard, man texting up, telling everybody to text to get to see the video. <laughs> I didn't think past. Rah, man's shoes on TV, man's gassed. You get me? That was it. And then I started to go out. That's the high energy, man. The high energy music get you turned. He had the whole spot lit. Once it popped on Channel U, that was when I saw an actual change because these records were getting so big that now MTV had to collar me. They had to holler me. It was too big. It was too, 
It was too much happening without them. It really changed my life. It changed everybody else's life around me. Everyone that was making hard, innovative shit, and that was actually a good artist, it changed their life. It was such, like, a hub. People all of a sudden were able to start building careers, like video directors, modeling agencies, like PR companies, radio pluggers, like all these different things. Channel U it wasn't just a platform for Finally. artists, it was for filmmakers as well, because there's so many people out there that wanted to be a music video director, but until Channel U, you couldn't get, what, are you going to direct music videos for Usher? No, like, you'd never get your visuals on TV otherwise. Channel U definitely helped in terms of, like, you know, the growth of independent labels. People were actually able to go from start to finish on a release and they didn't have to achieve, like, an MTV viable video or anything. It was like, we became that stepping stone between the underground and the mainstream. Mm. How, what, why did Channel U, I mean, okay, I get it why it's not here, because MTV's not here either. Or, and MTV, the network is still here, but like, music video-wise, the internet came, that's what really happened. Like, there was no point for it anymore. Just like, uh, radio was kind of dying as well, too, almost. End Dubs probably capitalized off of Channel U the most. The platform was already moving. Channel U was already going, so we felt like that was the place for us to go and put our music. I remember the first video going on to Channel U. Um, we waited up like to about four o'clock in the morning for it to channel you. This is Artie before Artie. <laughs> this is Arde before Artie. That's the. Um, we waited up like to about four o'clock in the morning for it to come on for one spin, and that I can't begin to tell you at that time. It was the most overwhelming feeling of happiness you could ever imagine. It was the fact that we was actually on TV. We released another record called Better Not Waste Time and um that's tough. It had Dappy in the pram, you remember, with the, with the thing coming out, nah, 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 and that, like, that was like a memorable moment for the scene because it was like, oh my gosh, what's <laughs> this? Is this a parody video or is it not a parody video? Actually, listen to the content, it's actually a serious video. It's like first things first. Yeah. You'd probably think I'm a chat with good manners. Where you're wrong, I'm the scum of the earth. It was just the way they was doing their videos. Ooh, you got the Eminem flow. Yeah. You'd probably think I'm a chat with... Actually, listen to the content, it's actually a serious video. It's like first things first. Yeah. You'd probably think I'm a chat with good manners, where you're wrong, I'm the scum of the earth. It was just the way that's hard. I can go look at it. I'm to go listen to that. They were doing their videos. They were creative and it was funny and it was catchy. End up knocked us off, you know. Yeah. We trying to use number one for time. <laughs> you better not waste my time. Yeah. I got better things on my mind. I need to leave drugs like you behind. Can't ever do is just bring me down. Obviously got to know end just by them coming in. Kat was really um, one of the people that really rooted for us in Channel U and pushed for our videos to be played a lot. She had a lot of belief in us. Just watching their growth. Is Kat an alien? She looked like she got younger. What the fuck? <laughs> on the channel what, and like watching the reaction it was something that like none of us had ever seen before we was part of their journey and we helped in some way to get them where they are obviously we didn't get them where they are but we helped on, along their journey which makes me proud they're asking us what song would you play if you had one more minute to live and what do we go and put down end of i swear sing along baby 2006 that record we went from being known locally to being like everywhere I swear, I swear I the times when you would tie me to a jail and tease me from the back of my neck to my ear she would have me to herself she didn't want nobody else but I, I that was at the time. 
what you were hearing. Well, that was hard. I ain't gonna lie. That that was pretty much the sound of at a time. Was story writing as well as sick bars, as well as sick delivery, and then the acting in the video. Who the hell shoes are these? I thought they were your new Nike. Don't tell me for a fool. I don't wear shoes like these, so don't lie to me. Why they me? Where's he hiding? I know you got a man up in it, so why don't you lie? Yeah. We knew at the time that we had something special. And we knew when that once that one touched, we was gone and praise the most high. Yeah, there we flew. Oh my gosh, N dubs. Um, yeah, a channel you basically is N dubs. We're not gonna lie. Man took me to one of their shows one time and it was like it was the first time I see um, you know like proper pandemonium though. You know like fanatic. You know, fans short for fanatic, but I see. I see fanatic that day, you know what I'm saying? I was like, raw, that's crazy. Did it feel like, you know, you were really creating this new platform and making a difference in the British music scene at the time? Do you know what? Um, when we look back at it now and see what the channel like stood for and achieved and the differences it made and everything, like you can really see the difference. But it was a very difficult business to run. We had like the authorities watching what was going on. Nobody wanted wanted to invest. Like we were way too grimy. Do you know what I mean? Like no one took it seriously. If it had just been a business and that's what it was about for Darren, Channel U would have finished years before it did. There's two stories to Channel U. There's the, the public face where the channel's doing well, it's growing its audience numbers and it's doing a lot of really interesting and relevant things. And there's the business side of it, which was much more difficult. On the business side, the story of Channel U is very much the legal battle it had through almost its whole life with the royalty collection societies and the major labels. Running a TV channel on the Sky Network is expensive because obviously the way we were viewed by like the mainstream, what we were generating in income, it was very, very small. But our VPL license was huge. We were paying a lot more in royalties than MTV were paying. It was Buzz and Chart Show against the major record labels. We'd spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands in legal fees. Plus, we'd spent a lot more than we should have done in royalties. And that's really what brought the channel down. The case was actually decided post Channel U's demise in our favour, but it was too late for us. You know, he had the weight of the whole industry on his shoulders, really. You know, and again, it's only becoming a bit, a bit older and a bit more wiser that I kind of looked back and was like, that's a lot of pressure, you know. Its major advertising sales agency went bang. When this when this when this when this originally posted, eleven days ago, I had seen it, and it was only an hour and thirty eight minutes. What did they do? What did they add on to the back of this? Bankrupt, <laughs> owing us Curious. hundreds of thousands of pounds as well. So then, all of a sudden, Channel U was with no advertising. So Darren's having to put his own money into it. Darren's mm. having to kind of finance this whole. Yeah, once you start putting your own money in, that's the that's the start of the end, man. <laughs> channel. Yeah, he was, he was stressing. I remember us sitting in a hotel bar, you know, he was talking about changing the channel. The business by that time had picked up a lot of debt. He was advised to put the company into administration because I've got previous experience in insolvency. I gave him some more advice and he took it. He then created a new channel. He comes to me and says, Luke, I need, I need a logo for Channel AKA. What kind of fucking name is AKA? Like, that made no sense. Kind of did in the end, like it's funny enough, but AKA I've done channel, the channel AKA logo on a bit of paper and a laptop in about 20 minutes after 15 pints of beer. Done it rough for him and said, Look, you know, we'll, we'll make it better and maybe next week when we're not drunk. And he's like, No, I love it, I love it. And that was it. Kind of shitty looking logo became <laughs> the AKA logo. You had this um, obviously sustained run of success with the channel and this kind of, yeah, golden era for it where everything was videos again, lots of views, artists were blowing up. When did you get a sense that things were changing um, and the channel was headed towards an eventual kind of decline? Um. The dynamic changed because what happened was like where you'd get like people like phoning you up and being like, oh my God, I've literally just got my video back. Like right now, can I come and bring it straight over? Like the channel would be the first place that you would see the visual. And slowly but surely what would happen is, and especially like, you know, because we couldn't fit every single video on, and obviously also because we then had to, you know, edit them and make sure they were compliant and everything. And what we started to find happening was, obviously people would then start uploading them to YouTube first. What? Dang! 
YouTube was the demise. <laughs> I told y'all, YouTube, hey, YouTube, YouTube killed a lot of things as far as music videos, BET, MTV, and anything else that was showing music videos. It took smooth over. It was killing. Um, Channel U at that time, unbeknownst to, to Darren, was actually SPTV. And he actually had an offer with a, a business partner, um, and I was at the meeting randomly, I don't know why, it was in some random carvery, and I was in there, and they, he was offered to um, buy um, SPTV, and he turned it down. A week later, he was with a, a web designer, and he's got this web designer said, yeah, fuck that, I'm gonna make an app, and it's gonna be the Channel U app, and kids are going to download the videos direct and, and, and vote for it, download, and he made this Channel U app um, thing. That. And that was what he thought was going to counteract SBTV. And that's put more or less the downfall. This is not tactical, what I'm about to say now, but it, it is true. Darren approached Rashid and said, could we hire you for the channel? And he said, no, 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 I've, I've, got, my, I've got my own plans. I'm going to start up, link up. And, and I remember on set going, oh. just... And look at that. Rashid, <laughs> shut up. Rashid got you on here doing a documentary now. Don't be stupid. Come work for the channel. What do you want a website for? And then that became um, a, a platform where you could go back to being unfiltered. And, and it drove all that passion back into the music. Because it had always been... So, was, so Link Up TV was top dog at one point? How old is Link Up TV? I never even looked at how old GRM... Uh, Link Up TV or SBTV. I don't even have SBTV. What is that? Is that a YouTube too? Built on like passion, it um, it was it became. I'm passion. sorry, cat. Start over. Over all that passion back. Didn't mean to interrupt you, cat. Into the music because it had always been built on like passion. It um, it was it became. It lost the excitement. As much as the love was still there for it, the excitement went because it stopped becoming that destination and like you stopped being that place that everyone wanted to rush to to give the videos to you and everything else. And it almost became like a little bit of an afterthought for a while. I, what is this? When he had his um, first heart attack, I think ah. it completely changed his outlook on a lot of things, and like particularly life and his home life. All of a sudden, like, he started to realise that he would need to take that little step back from it and probably focus a bit more on, like, what actually mattered back at home and everything. And I remember him phoning me and saying, like, what do you think, Kat? Like, you know, should we, um, should we sell the channel? And he'd, and he'd speak to me as if it was mine as well. Do you know what I mean? And I think, like, over those years, he'd given me so much ownership and control of it that it felt like that. And I remember just being like that. Well, yeah, like, I think it's probably time. And, you know, and then that was it. Like, it, and he said, like, you know, you've always got a job with me. Like, you can always work for me. But, like, you know, I, I think that that was my point to be like, I really need to go and do my thing now, you know, but people slowly just started to like drift into different directions anyway, like Hype City had closed a long time before that. I remember doing business with Darren for a good few years. What started to happen was the bigger booking agencies that still exist today started coming in and signing these guys on an exclusive basis based on their backstory, whether it's Kylie Minogue or X, Y, and Z. And by then, I was just like, you know what, fair play, the business is doing what, it's, it, what it was meant to do. Um, let's just close up shop. Carly and Dan had kind of separated a little bit, and then Carly started, like, kind of going off and doing her thing as well. When the building got robbed, I was in it. Then got called into the office and asked questions that I felt were insinuating, did Not I rob had. the kit? And I was just like, all the effort that I've put into this, I felt like that this is a bit unfair. And That's what happens. Normally when companies that, that, that build up companies that you started with and, and brought them to a certain level, when the money starts going and, and things start going left, they get to blaming. Like, <laughs> they get to pointing fingers at the people that help. But that's, that's how business is, man. Business is very cutthroat, man. The other big reason was I'd worked for Darren for eight years on the same salary, which was pretty low. We were talking and I said, 
Like, yeah, I'm really struggling at the moment financially. Like, is there any way we can talk about a promotion? And he was like, no, I'm not, I'm, there's no point uh, for me. But then he wanted to hire Rashid. So I was like, so you, it's not a money thing. It's, you'd want more for your money, like more people. So, um, so I, I felt like, yeah, maybe it's time for me to move on. When I realised that certain artists were having like strange meetings and getting their videos on, but bypassing me when I was in charge of videos, I was like, what's going on here? I got too big for my boots, that's my truth. I got too emotionally close to the channel and forgot that he was the boss. It's his, it's not mine. But I thought it was mine for so long, I was wearing the branding, t-shirts everywhere I was going, people were paying for my drinks and my food. Mr Channel you no you're not, you work there. There was rumours that the channel was in Damn. trouble financially and it was like, you know, we're going to be doing some redundancies, basically. And so I got offered a redundancy and I took it. And that, that was how I ended up leaving the channel, although, like, my heart left the channel a long time before then. I was human. I did something, I can say it all now. I, did, I, just, I, I wiped the computer and I said, you're not taking my hard work. I, I emailed myself, like, all my contacts and I wiped the computer and I said, there you go. I was 22, 23. I check it from time to time. I was obviously very concerned about it. I was still a major shareholder in the channel. Um, and I, I still kept in, in touch with Darren a lot and we, we've still meet up and, and discuss it. But I, it wasn't on my TV most of the time. I had a lot of other projects on. Ironically, I did get back in for probably the last six months of Channel AKA's existence, but that was uh, as to, to help Darren out rather than anything else. Just kind of faded out, I guess, in a way, to the point where there was still enough of, like, AKA left to be able to, like, you know, kind of hold on to it and go out with, you know, like, you know, a, a little bit of a bang, maybe. But I think it was just, it, it just felt like time for everybody. Channel AKA was sold to All Around the World, part of Universal Records in June 2012. And right after that, drill kicked off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Channel AKA stopped broadcasting on June 1st, 2018. Dang, it went a long time. See, this is about where it ended, the, the original video. Announcement, that's it, Channel AKA is no more. We find their grim and UK urban with Channel U and AKA giving first play to many homegrown acts. But today our friends massive R&B takeover at Skies 373 we say thanks for all your support over the last 15 years. Love always, AKA Dang. Through a tweet, huh? It's like I love it when I see rich black men like Diddy and Nelly. Uh -uh. But was even happier when I seen Dizzy Rascal get an album to and get his face on the telly. Personally, when he won his Mercury, I thought, well done. He's a black boy who's just like me. So, like, his respect is due, certainly. And then 679 Zankano, I don't know him, but I feel evil. And I still got... Man, some of them classics, you know what I mean? Every few months, I'll go back on YouTube and listen to some of them tunes, man. Some of them classics, you know what I mean? Because there weren't a feeling like that. There were legends like Skepta when... There was one video when he pulls up and then the girls pull up in the little Beatle thing. Blood, there's that. And then you remember that girl group that was in the Beatle? The one with the, the braids. Where is that girl today? Channel U Awards show as well. You go to that. Those are the times. It was lit. It was lit. Baby Blue. Yeah. Then obviously seeing people like SAS with like Kanye and videos and, and what they were doing with Rockefeller. Remember, these times were all young. In the beginning days of Channel U, still living at home with our parents. So. I used to go to their mom's house, like every time they would come back from New York, I'll go to their mom. Because you never had social media then, you have to wait for a man to come back to tell you what it was like. So it'll be like a whole five hours. They're like, yo, I went to Dame Dash's house. I was at Dame's house. I went to Cam's house. I was staying at Joel's house. And I'm just thinking like, what is going on? This is mad. So, nah, man, that was crazy. That was crazy, man. Yeah, man, SAS, super talented, Euro gang. It just wouldn't be the same at all because we would try to fit in more. We wouldn't be our authentic selves. And Channel U was a place that allowed us to just be us for us. Ed Sheeran. Bro, even what the streets used to do with all the prime MCs all the time. Morning, morning, this one stormy. That's the fit in, yeah. And it was rolling, rolling through Peckham in some whip. Kalashnikov. 
That's your Ross Clark neck of blood. Listen, we need to do a Channel U concert, day. Just bring back it. That would be sick. Personally, I don't think Channel U gets that the respect works. it deserves. But it gets the respect from me, but that's just how I see it, innit? A lot of kids that started just listening to music recently now, they're never going to have an appreciation for Channel U. It probably don't even sound like it makes sense. Like, what, you, you lot used to watch the TV every day to wait to see if there's new songs and that. That's some old caveman thing, like. If the younger gen- Nah, man, I, I remember that. I, I, I'm just not from the UK, so I remember the days when we used to wait up and watch BET or MTV or wait, BET for me, but but it was like we used to wait for the new music, man. That Tigger in the basement, what? With the Lil Wayne, this was some stuff was going on in there. It was different. Generation are not watching documentaries like this. They don't know about it to give it the respect. We all know what they've contributed. Don't worry, my boy, I'm watching. I respect it. Yeah, but whether it's recognised the way it should be is another thing, but I, I praise Channel U like it was like the best thing that ever happened to us. Channel U was a life-changing moment for me, and like I've said in the beginning, like, I don't know if I'll be here in this way if it wasn't for Channel U. But if that's not Gangster didn't do what it did, then open certain doors to me and bring me to certain spaces and places, then my journey would have been completely different, man. So there might not even be a sincere if it wasn't for Channel U in this way, which is mad for me to even say that because I reckon that everyone's destined and designed to be what they're going to be, but this version of me wouldn't exist. The people that used it and it worked, I feel it would always be close to their hearts, but we have sometimes a problem over here to remember legacy and remember people and remember foundation because things move so quick and people rewrite. Especially in the music industry. History. I think it does. I think it definitely gets the credit it deserves. Just like Pirate Radio, it gets the credit it deserves because it was a timeline. Everything played a significant role within the timeline. We're talking about a channel which we launched 20 years ago now. People's memories do fade a bit. I think I'm really happy that, that this project is a memory to what we, we achieved there. But there's, there's quite a lot of people I know who came up through, through the channel. Without this, there's only, like, I'm gonna be real with you. Since I've been doing these reactions for YouTube, uh, you know, I started doing music reactions two, three years straight, maybe four. So before this, there was one person, salute to her, she told me about Channel U. It was, I'd only heard of it one time since the entire time that I've been doing this. One time, and then this came out. So yeah, it's definitely lost. <laughs> but to know the history, I gotta, I gotta, to really appreciate what's going on in UK music, I gotta go listen, I gotta go watch stuff like this. You gotta know the history, you know what I'm saying? Without that, you just, Doing it for the views, right? Who built businesses on the channel? That, that's hugely satisfying to see. It started off here, you know, in 2003. Now you've got all these phenomenal creative artists yeah. that they grew up under the Channel U canopy. They grew up under the Channel U spectrum, and we're happy for them. We salute them. We get them round of applause for what it is they're doing. Now the whole globe understands the level of what UK is doing. Yeah. We should be celebrating it. We should be bigging Channel U up. I think Channel U done amazing things for, you know, underground culture. I think if it wasn't there at the time, I don't know what would have really happened. I don't know how long it would have took the UK scene to flourish to the level that it flourished at. I think Channel U also showed all of those people that were trying to control the game, they can't control it no more. And they had to now come and talk to a man at a different level and a different balance and a different stance with a different checkbook and a different everything, different suit, you need a different tie, might all need a different toothpaste. So Ooh. many people learnt their, their trade and learnt their skill from Channel U, so this is a point where people are going to realise how significant Channel U was in. Wow, I don't know where a lot of us would be if Channel U didn't pop up. It was a massive platform, a massive stepping stone for us. Without Channel U, boy, then... Where would I be with no YouTube? It's probably still working. Miserable, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at the time, you know, while I was working, we did, you didn't know you are miserable while you are working until you step out of it and look back at it like, whoa. There's nothing wrong with having a nine to five. I just wasn't in the nine to five for me, so miserable, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then we, we wouldn't have had nothing. Like, for real. Big up Darren, man. Darren enjoyed watching people succeed. You could see it in him. He really wanted Grime to win. 
people should celebrate Darren. Big up Darren for being an innovator. Definitely 100% for N-dubs. N-dubs owe them a, a kiss a champion. Darren is a man. If he loved you, he'd give you anything. He'd fight you to stop you buying anything. And I was brought up to pay me way. I ain't a punch, you know what I mean? But if he loved you, he'd do anything for you. Go out on Olympia. Just, he was a larger than life character, man. Always laughing or joking about. and yeah, Just a great man. I can say it's the best time of my life. In terms of in, in the business, he taught me. See, at least, at least, at least Darren was solid, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's people out here that's not really solid that don't want to like just build stuff like this for monetary gain, but like he really wanted to see a change, and you know what I'm saying? And, he, and this is what he left behind. People love that man. People love this man. Is he alive? <laughs> like, why are they talking like this? It's anyway. The bad and the ugly of the music industry. He was happy to take you as you were. And I think that, you know, that is an important part of his legacy because it allowed us to all grow into the artists that we are today. I didn't know he's had a series of meetings. And at the time, gigs turned up for a meeting as well. So I'm kind of, I mean, rah. Long story short, bro, we end up at two different strip clubs, my guy. Like, um, I didn't talk peas with the guy. I turned up the next day on set, no pay rise. Just the lap dance that he paid for me. The G-Shock, hey, crazy dumb collection. The G-Shock, crazy dumb. Think Tiny Tech has got a collection. This is, my the bullet went through here. Boom. You get me? The my thing, Mash down think they're going road. I keep it road, cuz. Roll, road. Roll, road. We're trying to leave the road, he's taking over the road. I'm taking over the roads, cuz. You get what I'm saying? It's a real road. But listen, yeah, the music. So, future plans, you lot said Wiley. You lot got videos coming out, any other singles? Yeah, we got a few videos coming out. I make sure Channel U get behind that, you know? Shout out to Channel U. Channel AK, cuz. Channel, channel, channel U got Rob for Channel. Channel AK, yeah. Rob, Channel U, Channel AKA. When we're talking about the music industry and the grassroots nature of grime and UK rap, I don't think that Darren gets enough mention um, about the position that he played um, and, yeah, the, the actual... Until today, I didn't know who that man was, man. Like I said, man, I appreciate the documentary, man. It's only three people in here watching it with me, but it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Three people that it's touched, four including me. Pause. The nature of the role that he played in breaking down those doors and changing the way that labels and execs looked at the music industry um, at the, the grassroots level. More than anything, I just think he's just a pioneer and, and played a massive part in you know, the way things played that and, and the evolution of UK music, to be honest. He's one guy that had my back, man, when there was times where Man couldn't get on nothing, let alone TV, like radio, those bare people just blocking. Big up Darren for that, man, and thank you for all the, the support over the years, man. Trust me, well appreciated, man. It was devastating to lose Darren. It was uh, a very unique relationship for me. Oh. That we had someone who was both my business partner and such a close friend. R.I.P. Darren, I didn't know he passed away. See, all of, every bit of this is new to me. We would speak 15, 20 times a day on the phone, and it, it, it leaves a massive, massive hole in your life. I got a phone call from his wife, and um, she, oh, I feel like I couldn't get to it. Um, you know, we were really great friends, and you know, I was gutted when I, I heard it passed away because there was a lot of unsaid stuff between us, a lot of things that he thought, a lot of things that I thought. And ultimately, we could have just brushed them away years before and just remained really great friends. Um, but I think with the pressure which was mounting with the channel and the pressure I had with my studio, you know, we kind of just drifted apart and I say certain things were said and sadly, I can't ever kind of, you know, speak to him again about it. You know, I was, I was really happy to see people like Lethal B and Devlin and Getz, everyone kind of, you know, they, they, they pay tribute. And I think it's important that people know what, what he did for the culture and for where we are now. Um, but yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was guided. I think it was the day after, one or two days after his funeral, I heard about it and Man, I was really pissed. I was really, really upset because I hadn't seen him again since we went our separate ways. For a long time, Darren had been away from, like, you know, like his wife and like the family and everything. And I think Channel U took 
him away a lot of that time, you know, like he was so invested in it and he loved it and, you know, like, and she just got him back to an extent. And I remember going on my Skype for months, like, you know, like he'd be there, like, you know, on the side of my Skype and I'll always remember he'd sent me a message and I hadn't replied. Like, I missed that last conversation with him. And, um, yeah, I think, like, after that, I, um, I phoned, like, I think I phoned Colin. We started doing different things, so we didn't see each other as much as we did, but we were always in contact and we were always meeting up or when we could. And we were always going for, like, drinks and food and talking about life and the stuff that we did together and the mistakes we made and the ratifications and, yeah, we, we were friends, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we, we was in contact. Um, yeah, quite a bit. Actually, I spoke to him the day before he passed away. Damn. We, we were talking about going to a football match the week after. He was How starting a business all the time. You know, like he had a catering business where he was um, supplying food to festivals. And it was like only Darren would think of something so simple but so effective. Darren had a heart attack a little while before he oh. passed and obviously we was all yeah, out that's, that's and thought he was on the mend. And sadly enough, yeah, he, he went and I think my manager, Colin, rang me. Cried my eyes out when I heard he passed. I was very tight with him. We, we all was my people. Uh, yeah, very sad, sad times, man. Still missing that. He was always giving me support, you know, and telling me about the new artist I was working with. So yeah, we was we we would be we was always always speaking it until the sad day. Very end. My old man always said to me, "You can only make memories in life." He had a World Cup party once in his right out in Essex in his land, and I think we stole Digital Dan's weed. Did it? He was nearly having a meltdown. Uh, his dog was like a lion, I think it was called a Leopold. Someone, I woke up with that lick in my face the next morning, I think, on the grass. Just mental times, yeah, man. Good to look back on. I think sometimes, you know, like, legacy is too much, like, it's too egotistical, yeah. But for real, he's actually left a legacy. Like, he actually left a lasting impact on a scene. Boy, he's a G for that. Yo, yo, I swear it was like around the times when things were going well, when we had to pack guns and then Ash went jail and then I... It was definitely good times, like, learned a lot, met a lot of people. It was a massive, I guess, educational period. Darren respected me five times more when I left Channel U because I'd gone into the big wide world <laughs> and, oh, and I was working for all these major labels and shooting like big budget videos. So I think he finally thought, oh, maybe you did need to spread your wings. You know, I look at someone like um, Sincere who manages um, Fredo and I put Sincere's first video on the channel, That's Not Gangster, when he was a rapper. Um, and then I managed him as an artist later on. And then when he started managing as an artist, he came to me. So I've had three different interactions full circle with this guy that started with me putting his video on his channel. Things like that are the, are the legacy of Channel U for me. I do occasionally, because I'm human, say to myself, I wish I was more smart back then. I would have opened up an agency and just developed artists and had that till now. Since Darren in 2009, I've remained in the business of insolvency. I published my book last year, um, Self Made by me, PJ Murray. It's my autobiography uh, detailing um, my 50 years on this planet, all the ups and downs and the roller coasters that goes with it. Now, today, I've got my own TV production company and I often use my experiences from, you know, Channel U now, to produce shows today. I'm working with secondary school kids, teaching, head of year. Don't ask me how that happened. I've gone from putting Chung family on TV to giving A stars to people. So I, I run a um, independent... I ain't gonna lie, he sounds pretty depressed about what's going on. Uh, my bad, like... 
independent management company, um, a publishing company, um, a record label, um, called Since 93. Ricky was smart about then. Ricky was laying foundation and he did try and tell me. But I was on a hype. I was getting free trainers from Adidas every week. I was getting money clothing like it was nothing. Big up Shabs as well, by the way. Shabs was, um, he was always around and trying to look out for people. Today I'm still, um, I, I, I play an A&R role. Um, I lend my producer skills, uh, management. Um, yeah, and I always, it's all because of the strength of our black music scene that that, that is today, the strength of, of Channel U as well. I took a leap of faith into the pop world. I went to Sony, I went into Psycho Records, and the commissioner, who I'd only met for the first time, said, just so you know, your reel and your work experience doesn't justify you doing this video for Simon Cowell, just so you're aware. Well, that made me, like, dig deep, because I was thinking, hang on, you have no idea what I've been through to do this, so uh, this is a walk in the park. And, and so I, I smashed it, is what I did. <laughs> I really had to ask myself, like, what it was that I'd loved so much about it. Like, why had I stayed, like, in this bloody, crazy, like, you know, raw, like... She's from Scotland? She gotta be. I don't even know, like, but she sounds... It's deep. Energetic, like, you know, nuts environment, like, getting shit off everybody all the time. And, and you know, like, but I mean, like, it was, it was amazing. And I realised that it was Watching that growth and being a part of that was what I absolutely loved. I started 10 Letter, like, go with it. I know these people, I know these people. I know that I want to connect all these artists and, like, put them in front of everyone. Let me go and do it. And, and that is literally how it came about. Um, I'm, I'm keeping busy now. I've still got two television You're channels, invested. which Darren and I started, uh, sitting on Freeview. I'm also involved with a co-founder of a, a green technology business which cleans up the waste from copper mines, so it's something quite different. Yeah. yeah. That's everything you need, really? OK. So that's me, myself and I, Luke Biggins, director. You're watching Big. Check me out on www.urban-visual.co.uk. Alternatively, if you want a video made or you want to get in contact with myself, check out www.manmosquito.co.uk. Big shout out to everybody I know out there. And if you, you know, want to be a director, keep at it. And uh, good luck. Peace. Dang, you died too, huh? R.I.P. Luke. That's the end of that, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. If you stuck around, if you watched the whole thing, salute to you. If you just dropped by to be a first responder and hit the like button, appreciate that as well, man. This is honestly inspirational. I got a good grind, a good work rate, but this makes me just want to grind it a little bit harder, man. Because you never know, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, I'm gone.